Thunder or TI. And Thunder Awaken is looking to change that. But they're probably experiencing a little bit of deja vu, Avery, because Stockholm Major, they themselves set the record of top six out of Valve Major by being able to get to the upper bracket semifinal, where they unfortunately ran into Tundra and got 2 0. Then they get knocked down to lower bracket, run into OG, another Western European team, and get 2 0. Now, here at TI, they get to the upper bracket semi-final. Who do they run into? Team Secret, another Western European team. They get 2 0 Now they're in the lower bracket. Now is the chance, now is your time to change the cycle, to change the narrative, and beat all of your previous records. You guys know there's other regions of the game, right? You know, they, they don't have to play Europe every time around. <laughs> that said, I, th I think uh, Liquid is very comfortable playing other European teams. I think they're less comfortable playing a team like Thunder. Yes. That is more unpredictable. They haven't played them through the year. They are more unfamiliar with how they're going to play the map, just the run at you style. And I think compared to yesterday, this draft is a lot more fast paced for Thunder than especially that game two versus Secret where it felt very slow and clunky. Sure, you have Enigma, but they got this Mars in the first phase. They love to flex this hero. They get a good matchup with the Enigma versus Lifestealer. Bloodseeker last pick to deal with the Pango. I could see this game causing Liquid some issues, and Liquid is a team that is. I mean, they're just riding the momentum, right? Other yeah. than that upper bracket uh, loss, this is an LCQ team coming through all the bracket, pushing to top six, looking for that top four berth. You have a huge amount of experience on their side. Matu and Zai go back many, many TIs. You have a lot of veteranship versus a lot of fresh blood. Makes for a good Bloodseeker. Makes for a spicy game, that's for certain. I, I love that you pointed that up uh, because, I mean, Blitz himself said that they were surprised that EG took Thunder because they thought that Thunder was a very scary team to oh, face yeah. up against, uh, particularly at a TI. He said, you know, these guys, they're going to run at you, and that is hard to deal with under the TI pressure. Now you're in an elimination game. That's even more pressure. So we'll see how Liquid manages to deal with that as uh, we take a look at our lanes here. We've got the Zybox duo of Pango Tiny up against Matthew and Bacaz, the Bacaz Bloodseeker. Well, you heard about it from Slacks and Blitz on stage. Got to watch out for this guy. And they got the lane matchups. Like, this is something Thunder, Liquid trying to dodge. Thunder will match them. They will get the Enigma versus the Lifestealer. Like you said, it's going to force this Bloodseeker into the off lane. So I don't think it's the ideal setup for Enigma. He never really wants to play in his safe lane. I think if he can get away with it, he'd rather pull the lane back top. But Thunder will still be happy to get the matchups and Perhaps the bigger one is this mid. How much is Mickey going to own this range versus melee scenario where we've also seen him just go ham in some of these matchups this tournament? Yeah. He gets off to a good start here. You know, maybe Insania drags him another wave like he did earlier today. Yeah, yeah. Get some extra CS. You never know. This is a matchup I could see him abusing pretty well. And he should have a very good start in this track. Of course, he also has the Lich Armor to back him up. This is a combo we've seen power through some of these lineups that are very physical oriented. You have Bloodseeker, you have Mars, you have to man up through this Lich Frost Shield. Helps Mickey just run in in frontline. He has Infest as well to tank him up even more. And of course, you're probably going to get a Wraith Pact on this Pango. So Thunder need to think about the damage in the mid game, not overextending and making sure they can deal with the front line from Liquid, which is going to get quite tanky at a certain point. Yeah, expect to see uh, some Wraith Packs on both sides. It's uh, Sacred, of course, on the Enigma is already queuing that one up. I think he had a cue before the game started, yeah. to be honest, at this point. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what hero, really, right? Yeah. What are you playing today? I don't think I'm playing Wraith Pack. <laughs> Sounds good. The guy's a little bit awkward. Gets tossed back into a position. Takes a little bit of damage, but he's a Blood Seeker. Infinite sustain as long as you get those last hits, so shouldn't really be a problem. I also think it's the reason we've seen this offlane Pango come back. Like, this is a hero that Zai actually excels on. I'm sure he's very happy to have it back in the meta, and he's been destroying lanes with it. This is a tough one, but... They're still not doing too bad for double melee versus a Seeker who already at 440 MS. Got to think about the other lanes whenever you have this hero. Do not power him up too much. He'll run you down. Yeah, seriously. But this Pango, he's a great Wraith Pack fire himself. Uses the Vlads very well. And any, I feel like any of these weird heroes, that's what Zai excels on. You know, mm. Put him on something that gets in the back line, disrupts you, makes you feel awkward. He's always going to find the right positioning. And it's very cool to see him back on this hero. That said, he has to play into Rupture and Black Hole. Yeah, and a Rubik's it's not deal. a fun game for him whatsoever. So, uh, uh, cautious <laughs> optimism. 
I, in, in that case, I mean, we talked about how important the Wraith Pact is, but do you think there's a chance of like an earlier Blink Dagger in order to deal with the, all of these counters and just try and get the initiation first? Or do you think it's a, a mute affair? It's like, you, you, you're gonna get countered, might as well just focus on the team fight aspect. Could be first blood here, Lift Pact. Yeah, Lift Pact into the blood, right? It's gonna be a lot of damage and he knows he's dead. Boxy is gonna fall and Bakaz picks up the first blood. Just a little too over anxious with the skirmishing there. Bakaz will heal up off the kill, already into the boots, having a pretty good start in this off lane. I mean, size animation is going to be crucial for Liquid. Like, does he go this more utility route? Does he try and go a Lincoln's or Lotus to deal with the rupture? Does he just try and get a Basher at some point to help deal with the black hole? Mm. There's a lot of weird animations he could go into this game down the road, depending on how hard he wants to scale. He still has two other damage cores. It's going to be something oh, to look Lich. out for in the Eidolons. That is going to be kill oh. now in both of the side lanes for Thunder. Fast Very start. good start for them. And with the spear that we saw earlier from Dark Mago, looks like he secured the water rune, so he was able to get a refill on his bottle. He's doing pretty well for himself. He's not able to keep up with Mickey when it comes to the CS, but I mean, this is well worth it. Oh, oh this is a uh, battle to the duel because barely able to get away. And now he's going to get some last hits and heal himself up and die. One. He's going to be pushed away and he's got a lift coming up. He's got the shield crash as well. He's actually going to get to the other side of Matthew. Box is going to make an appearance here. Zai, is he just they committing? He's going to try and get a trade. He is going to die here and the faithful finishes him off. Now Boxy shows up in this 1v2. Now both of them are quite low. Boxy. Is he going to throw out the tree? He's not. And in now the question is, is he just dead? Is he just going to be run down by Bacaz all the way back to the tower? The Blood Rite's going to do a ton of damage. I think he's just done for. Thunder off to a huge start here in this laning phase. 4-0 and zero against Team Liquid. And you can't ask for it on a better hero either, right? This team is playing around their one position the whole tournament. Bacaz is the deadliest carry at this event. Give him a start like this. He will take it and ride it all the way to your Ancient. Now, this is a very crucial point right here. When you get the kill, oh, it comes back. Bloodseeker's still a little bit low, but it looks like the damage. Zai, he's got to be careful. Oh, Quash buckle to Zai, but Gaz doesn't get hit by it. Heals up a little bit more. And now Zai, one more hit. He tossed him over to the creep wave to get him away from this Ooh. deadly Bloodseeker. But Kaz comes back in, snatches the last hit. Oh, Himself alive God. ahead of Boxy. This man knows to play the margins. And now Matthew can he shoots the kill. And he gets it underneath the tower. And Bacaz takes that moment to try and snatch a little bit more heal. Boxy standing in the way, but I think now with this blood right. Oh, Glyph? Boxy really doesn't want to let him go. He does not want to let him back into this lane because passes him over the tip. He's like, I know what you're doing. I'm going to play it patient. I mean, especially with where the equilibrium is. If Zai can come back and then keep this lane here, they don't want to let Bacaz get back up to that full HP. That said, Zai does not have teleport, so oh, he has no way to get back up to this top lane. Boxy will now take it over. I guess Matu will. Ooh, that is very interesting. Behind the levels, though, compared to this Bloodseeker, right? The kills propelled this Bloodseeker to level five and a half. Matu's only four and a half. Yeah, Matu shows up to lane at half health. They do manage to get a toss back. A little bit of damage there, but no real fear of death for Bacaz. In fact, you can see Bacaz fearless. If you haven't seen it, Bacaz Bloodseeker had an incredible performance in the playoffs earlier, and uh, Probably one of the craziest blood seekers I've ever seen. Absolutely right. plays the margins. I mean, Liquid has had enough of this blood seeker out of control, and they are just going to bring the full tri lane here. Sends I bottom, say get whatever you can. Does have a favorable matchup versus Enigma. It's probably the lane setup Liquid won it from the get go. They're showing on the ward. Dark Mago is actually sneaking in from the side here. He's got to back up. He's got, too. He's got Panda joining him. Very deadly rune for uh, mid Mars at this point in the game. Will guarantee an arena latch. Thunder just playing with full information. He gets spotted. Panda gonna try and deal with the ward. Spear goes out, but there is gonna be a nice avalanche. Mid game, they might actually go for a little bit more here. Dark Mago, he does have their arena. So if he wants to be able to disengage, he might need to be able to pop it here. And Sandy's gonna grab and pops the haste and now starts running away. So he's gonna be good. He goes more. back in. He wants to be able to kill the supports. Now the spear's back up with the arena, the combination. Does a lot of damage to Boxy. Not enough for the kill though. Mm. He's gonna reset. Back to lane he goes. Not getting much out of that haste rune. Probably a little sad for him. He'll get the repo from Pandamu. Something to make him feel a little better. Quench Still, he really would have liked to get a core kill in the jungle or, or force someone out of a lane with that. Liquid doing a good job of, of holding their ground in this early game. Still, these side lanes did not go how they wanted. And I mean, the start for Bacaz is monstrous, but Zai also just getting shut down. It's behind in levels. Sacred's a level ahead of him. More river skirmishing for the runes. 
tries to toss the Mars away, but it's not going to be good enough. Nukes overwhelmed Team Liquid 6-2 to two now with a 2,000 net worth lead here at eight minutes. Thunder has got to be feeling very good about this start, especially with a lineup like this that is supposed to be so snowball heavy. Oh, they're feeling really good. It's also the levels, right? Like uh oh, not level six buffer. on Matumba Man. He needed just a little bit more. The wind fest. Xenia is still here. They're pulling back in. A little bit of heals going out, and they actually almost trying to chase after him. Now Matumba Man, the creep wave is going to die, and he should be able to get his level six, so he can infest heal if he wants to, or hold on to it. Little harassment rupture. Never hurt anybody. Oh, that's interesting. He actually smoked back to the fountain so he could get out on the map quicker. He's going to TP out to the side lane. He's going to go to the safe lane here. He wants to keep Zai down. I mean, we talked about how this Pango already has a hard enough game. He was shut down in the lane. If they caught him there, it would have been just one more problem for Zai, but Swashbuckle barely gets him out of that uh, arena. And both players playing blind there. That was a hard smoke to read. Pull back. Matthew is going to be slowed down by Matumba Man. Still has some stick charges to work with. The supports may be traded out here. Matumba Man can't actually chase oh, after the Rubik, but Mickey is going to be able to catch because they bring the core up to the top lane where they tried it once with the support earlier to shut down because now they bring the powerful Mickey Leshrac to the table, and that's going to be able to get two kills for them. Nice TP way, though, by Matthew. Very nice rotation from Mickey Lane. Uh, everything, but yeah, you're going to pay the price down there at some point. Too many ultimates for one pango to handle. Yeah, no, no, nothing for him to do there, but spam the chat wheel, I guess. Still, the this has been a great recovery in the last two minutes for Liquid. Those early signings were looking rough, but all of a sudden, Mickey is way ahead of the pack here out of a game where it could have gone either way. If one of those sideline moves fails for him, suddenly he falls behind Thunder pull even more ahead. So Mickey doing the best job to to push through this early game for Liquid into that big game where their spells can really shine. And the sort of opposite happened for Dark Mago, right? Like he tried to rotate to, to bottom, yep. didn't get the immediate kill. They they thought about the incursion into the jungle. He just kind of ended up stalling and not really doing much there. We saw the arena use where he didn't get the boxy kill. It's been sort of the opposite for him, so. And that's debilitating on mid-marks. It's not a hero that wants to miss those rotations since we see another rupture. Zai still getting beat on. The blood right is going to be used to finish off Insania. And Zai, the last little bit of rupture. Oh, no, it lasts too long. Couldn't really. Again, just a lose-lose scenario there for Zai. When you're playing Pango against a Bloodseeker, you're going to have a good time. Saker just instantly TP's top off that kill. Thunder are really trying to abuse these hero to hero matchups, getting the ults on the right targets and then just moving around quickly. This is a pace they're very used to playing and I think how they prefer to play a lot of these early mid games. They are not afraid to use their ultimates off cooldown. Just spam you, force reaction, get a numbers advantage somewhere else and then make the quick smoke. Liquid need to be thinking about where their heroes can get, where the teleports are up, and where Thunder's gonna move to next. Do not wanna get caught off guard. Now, we saw Lestrak clearing through them some stacks earlier. That's part of where that net worth lead comes from. But you can see Dark Mago has his own stack still to be cleared through so he can catch up a little bit here. And he's got his blink flying out. Early blink. Um, so this is Brown Boots blink rush for the mid Mars. Again, very active. You want to make sure this next smoke or move lands. Where do you go? Like, who is your target with this blink dagger? Who is your number one kill? I think you're, you, if you can get the Lesh in this game, Radiant's that's ideal. Tower. I think it's a lot attack. of Liquid's early momentum. Mickey's also healing, he'll go somewhere else, so maybe Thunder read where he TPs and then choose to attack there. They also have the option, if he TPs out, to go somewhere else, which could try and force the fight top, but I think they're happy just leaving Enigma up there. The boxy is trying to hold the rune for Mickey, and it does get denied by Pandamu before Mickey could get there. Well done. Handy. I just don't have any smokes here, so this blink is... The actual move is getting slowed down a little bit. It's also hard to just jump into this this mid trio from Liquid if they're just sitting behind the ledge, right? Yeah. Like Mars is not the highest damage mid hero. He really relies on using his spells to engage his supports. The Rubik and the Maiden are going to be a lot of the early game damage. They're just going to push it up. Great packed online for Sacred. I feel like they're strong enough to just push the issue. Oh yeah, this is going to be way ahead of Zai's Ray back. So they certainly have the item timing here, the advantage to Thunder. Is it enough of an advantage for them to take this mid tower? If they can take this mid tower, huge amount of map control goes their way. See if Dark Mago wants to jump deep. He does have Blink Spearback potential. He 
you have the gaze counter initiation. Here comes Zyna's going up. in. He's going to slow down Dark Mago. They're going to blow everything they can on this Mars right away. They just 100% all in him. They get that kill, but it was a lot of spells used for it. And now the Bloodseeker is going to join in the fight. Nice toss over. It's still inside the Blood Right, though. And they have the Rupture oh, and the Black Hole, apparently. They have a nice Swashbuckle on the side. And they also the Avalanche hit on three. So a lot of damage returned back from Team Liquid. Zeker gets a little bit low. But Kaz on the front line is super healthy, though. They have to jump over the side. Matthew gets caught by the Swashbuckle. But it's going to be Matumba in trouble. trouble by Bakaz. He dodges the stun, though. Bakaz lets Panda move finish up the kill on Matumba Man instead. Tiny Airlines not enough to bail out his carry. <laughs> Because happy to join a type of fight like that. Still, it's a very awkward engagement. This Mars just walking up into all of their spells, dying for free. Not really what you want with this itemization in the start you had. <laughs> yeah, it's like you picked up this fresh blink dagger and you're yeah. the one frontlining. That's uh, it's an interesting choice. I mean, you either gotta might... go and jump and start it, or you're just tanking it for the boys. I guess that's one way to do it. Yeah. But that's a it's a very nice engagement for Zai. Like he gets out of there, he's not tanking the rupture. Your life sealer pays the price, but he's gonna go carry items this game. Like he's queuing up Blink, he's queuing up the Fusel. This is not Wraith Pack Pango. This is I wanna be able to deal with the Enigma and the, the Bloodseeker in the late game. Okay. Oh now the question, I mean <laughs> Wraith Pack feels like a must-have, so who is gonna go it on the side of Team Liquid? Or is it necessary? Maybe it's not necessary. Pulling an item audible here. Mmm. Insane you'll get it at 60 minutes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the five position dream. Oh! That's a swing and a miss there on the swashbuckle. Not that they were really going to be able to get that kill anyway without a blank dagger, so. I mean, maybe Liquid just feel the way Thunder's damage works is just too overwhelming. Mm. You have this Enigma Midnight Pulse, you have Black Hole, you have Rupture. It can be displaced with Lift, it can be displaced with Spear. Like dropping a Wraith Pack and all these types of spells and how they interact. It doesn't really sound that amazing to me, right? You sure. might just want to have the better offensive potential and just be able to run into it and kill them faster. Okay. Like, if you can jump the Enigma this game, if you can jump the Rubik, those are your best targets for Liquid. Just getting on the back line, killing them fast, and then Thunder's Force can't take the fight in the 3-on-5. And that's kind of the narrative of uh, Pango versus Bloodseeker in general, right? It's like, <laughs> that guy counters you, so you kind of have to get the, the initiation on that Bloodseeker first to have any impact. Yeah, you either jump him or, you know, Take a page out of Collapse's book and buy five Lincolns. It's one or the other. <laughs> you can see Camp stacked, Thunder up by 2K right now, and probably a decent part of that is not just the kills, but also the fact that they've been able to stack a little bit more than Team Liquid. A wraparound through the side here. Smoke that's going to break on Pandaboo. Certainly not the target that they want from this. Something small they're going to get. Support. <laughs> a little bit of help there from Boxy, and it secures the kill, but... In the river, Zai spawning. Big rune, DD for Mars. Helps us damage a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, this move was designed to secure bottom tower. They're only going to get the Maiden on top, while Enigma is pushing for the trade top, and we'll get it. They really wanted to use this Lestrack Bloodstone timing, fight with it. Of course, you have Insania maxing that Frost Shield, so Bloodstone Lestrack going in with the level 4 Frost Shield. It's going to pose some issues for Thunder in this early game. The cause thing about a little cheeky play there. Yeah, couldn't quite get the rupture off or chose not to, one or the other. I, mean, I think he's happy farming for BKB. Oh, yeah. You look at this liquid lineup, they do not do anything to him in BKB. So you're talking way late game, depending on bash or situations. It's pretty much just reset, stall the fight, make him overextend, and then re engage. But so surely liquid just can't be strong. They just can't stall and just let that BKB happen, right? Especially since they have this. Uh, Blink Dagger pick up from Zai. It's probably time to make some sort of move here. I mean, they've been trying. They've had aggressive smokes. They're trying to invade this jungle. <laughs> Spotted him. Knocks him down to low ground, though. That's a little awkward. He's going to have to use the Arena Spear to finish him off. And uh, now they can deward that high ground if they want to. Just hard to run in. A lot of counter initiation in this Thunder lineup. On top of that early Wraith Pack, like the, the Wraith Pack for Thunder is going to do a lot for Liquid's early damage. Mm -hmm. Until Lifestealer has more items here, then he can cut through the, the low armor cores on Thunder. Yeah. But he's trying to get to that Deso, and it, it's going to be a bit before Matu gets there. His, his start was a lot slower. He had to swap those lanes. He had to deal with the higher level Bloodseeker in that matchup. So he's trying to get there, but it's, it's going to be a little slow. It sounds like to me, Thunder, not only do they feel pretty strong right now, but it feels like that's not going to change for another like 10, 15 minutes from what you're describing. Nope, it's pretty much just waiting for Picasso's items. Don't feed away any bad kills. Try and get to the BKBs, and they know they're strong with BKBs. This is a triple BKB lineup. All three of the cores are itemizing for it. 
It's going to be a very difficult time for Liquid to, to deal with if Thunder can hit their spells. That is going to be the big question, right? Maybe you try and bait the fights out if you're Liquid. Put someone in front, use your buybacks, take your fights on your vision and your outpost. This is not a Thunder lineup that can just force the Roche super fast. Mm -hmm. You can do it with the Vlads built into the pack. Bloodseeker can take it moderately fast, but I don't think Thunder just want to force objectives straight up. I think we saw that earlier. You put your Mars up there, it doesn't end well. Yeah. This will come in handy. So we're going to have Radiance a you know, brief respite in this game attack. while Thunder try and reach that BKB timing. And like you said, Liquid doesn't want to let them get there for free. Illusion. Just on side to try and find something with this blink. But so far, all the rotations have been a miss. There's an illusion. They're going to jump forward, Zai. Ooh, blinks just ahead of the spear. Now Insania is going to be able to grab Dark Mago with Matama Man coming in from the side as well. They're going to try and get some chains up. But what a black hole oh, for Sacred. A three man in the back line with a roll on through from Matthew as well. A stolen rolling thunder. It's picture perfect for Thunder. They're going to wipe everyone on the side of Liquid unless Zai can somehow carry Matama Man to safety. No There's chance no in hell. Underneath the tier two, Liquid will be dragged down to hell. 16 to 7 now as Thunder take a dominant lead. Man, I mean, we're talking about the counter initiation here. You overextend those aggressive moves, they're hard. You feel the pressure from Liquid. They want to punish before these BKB come out, but that is just not the fight. You don't have the vision, you don't have the control. I don't know what Picasso is dropping on the ground, but maybe <laughs> some big guy items. small <laughs> items coming out of his yeah, pocket. <laughs> I mean, just beautiful setup here for Thunder. The Illusion doing no work for Liquid either. They do get the arena baited out. This looks decent for a moment, but of course, Zai's just rolling in here. He's gonna get ruptured. He gets ruptured. The black hole hits the back line with vision from the Illusions. And I mean, that's a done fight because I think 900 MS plus at that point. Yeah. <laughs> You're not escaping that Ferrari. And just in general, the fact, I mean, I, I feel like this is a mistake. I usually say you can only make that mistake once on TI stage. Maybe you never need to make that mistake. It's the, the Rolling Thunder and not popping Shield Crash. Yep, immediately, right? He gave deal. away the Rolling Thunder to Matthew, and Matthew off that black hole did a huge amount of damage because forced to use his BKB here from a bit of aggression off of the Tumba Man. Seems like he's trying to make use of that early shard pickup and get a little aggressive. Oh, second room. Rolling Thunder. Still off cooldown. Yeah. DD rune as well. Easy cleanup. Zai wants to try and turn it around. Yeah. Pango on Pango action. Balling on through is going to bump into Sacred here. Mickey's going to just still run in, but look at that. The BKB, Dark Mago, he's not afraid of a fight. Immediately spears up the last strike, who pops the Bloodstone, so he's not taking any damage for now. With a freezing field, really well placed Picasa's by Panamu. Here. They're trying to rip through him, and the Disco Pony is down, and so goes Zai. Another big team fight win as Thunder. They got the momentum early. We said they're a team that is going to run at you, and right now they're running through Liquid. I mean, Liquid's trying to run at the back to a degree, too. I feel like they feel as though they're on timings this game, and they're falling behind. They want to take the fight. It's somewhat hard to disagree with them if you just give these triple BKBs into the Roshan. The map is going to get nasty real fast. I just think it's hard to engage like that, right? When Pango is just rolling in first, yep. you're giving a lot. You're, you're giving a free roll, old steel potentially. You're giving a free rupture to Bakaz. Bakaz gets to come into these fights last. He's super happy almost no matter what happens. I mean, he didn't even have to have BKB up for that fight. And of course, Dark Mago just frontlining with another double damage room. You'll take it every day. Aegis on the back of this Bloodseeker, 8K lead for Thunder. I'm worried about the control Liquid has to fight into this timing. This Pango blink did not pay off in these engagements. Now Zai is falling pretty far behind, and his game is just not easy, like we said. Yep. And again, who is starting the fight if it's not him? Boxy is getting the blink off this way. Okay. So now they have the toss back mechanic. Maybe that is the answer. Try and separate the engagement. Let Matu actually beat on somebody. Ooh, ooh Zai! That was impressively fast. Just a real quick roll up, so he doesn't get telekinesis, Dyer's and then blinks time. away before the hit comes in. I mean, Matthew has split earth as well, so telekinesis is guaranteed chain stun into that split earth. These initiations from the Rubik, who also has his blink online, very deadly. I mean, he is going to have free reign for a long time, right? Like, who is jumping Rubik in these fights? Pretty much nobody. Uh -huh. There's a lot of scary spells he can steal this game. We saw Sacred, he's about halfway through to his BKB. So <laughs> it just gets worse and worse for Liquid. If uh, Thunder wants to run at you, probably not gonna be doing well in team fights right now. Later on, they're gonna have that sort of the ultimate team fight. They don't have a BKB cancel.
because of the fact that Zai didn't get that progression you were talking about, that Basher, uh, I'm not sure if that's ever going to come. No, oh, I don't think the Dipu is either. He's swapping it up to Yule's Wraith back, so going yeah. back for the utility. I just worry it's going to be too little too late as Thunder just pushing down this bottom lane. What stops him pushing high ground, forcing Liquid back on off the map? Arcane rune up for Dark Mago. They have all the BKBs. Basher up on Pekaz as well. This is one of the biggest items in the Bloodseeker Nakes matchup. It's like who's getting Basher first, who's getting to Abyssal, the infest relationship. Pekaz can just man up on Matumba right now, and he's not afraid of too much. Sure, the Frost Shield helps a little, but again, so much magic damage to back up the Bloodseeker going in. Radiance middle it's getting Lock. hard for, to stand their ground. They're going to try and catch Picaz. He's they get the Blink Dagger on him. Don't let him get off the Rupture. Keep that chain stun going. Foxy's going to be able to follow it up as well. Oh, no. Didn't get the, uh, didn't throw it the Avalanche in. And you can't chain stun that Rolling Thunder. So other he gets side, off the BKB. Though. The other side. Oh, the Chain Frost almost killing Dark Mago. Right, he gets off the BKB. In. Now he comes back in to try and finish off Big A. But the BKB Bloodstone is too much for them. He's running them down with the help of Boxy coming in from the side. Team Liquid. The combination of knowing where the Bloodseeker was, even if they didn't get that kill, just knowing that he's away from the team fight presented an opportunity for Liquid. That was an absolutely disgusting Chain Frost, man. That, that was a 4K net worth Chain Frost right there. I mean, damn. Lush did all the work at the end, but that thing just destroyed them on the club. They tried to finish off Mickey with Black Hole into the Mars damage, but again, Mikaz was in that engagement by the triangle. He's not there to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Mickey lives. All right, time to turn the engagement around. The break. Liquid sees on it extremely well. Take advantage of the split situation. Mikaz being maybe a little out of position from his team, and I mean, you'll take those bounces all the time. And yeah, we've seen this from uh, the Mickey Leshrac. Bloodstone, you've got to be so careful of playing into Leshrac. Zai needs a little help, and he's got it in spades. The full squad is going to show up to bail no out of the boy. And now he comes back. He's not going to be BKB. He's going to be split Earth. They could just change him down. Dark Mago can't do anything to stop it. He doesn't have the mana either. He pops the, the Soul Ring now. He's going to have to try and spear back Matumba Man and actually hit the Lich on the way. So he gets the distance for himself to be able to retreat, but couldn't bail out his carry. Thunder, they had such a strong hold on this game, we felt like, but... They just haven't been playing around each other enough, it seems like. And Boxy confident in the Aegis. might just find another one here. Blink for Blink. Matthew went backwards, but Boxy oh, caught him. Swash missed. Swash misses from Zai, so they fail to get that kill. But if they can get the tier two, it's a pretty massive exchange. Boxy does a good job covering his spells, too. Matthew only walking away from that with tree grab. It's a very impactful interaction with this tiny. You do not want to give this Rubik Avalanche if you can get away with it. Oh, oh yeah. It's kind of acceptable, but he has blink, so even that's a little bit deadly. A lot of little things going Liquid's way, and suddenly that lead that Thunder had that might have been able to close out this game is back to even. A lot and, of momentum swung in the last five minutes. And some of the matchups and some of the item times that we were talking about have changed a lot, too. We have the Yules now on Zai, and he's like, you know what? Wraith Pack, that's old news again. I'm going back for yep, that Basher yep. to try and deal with the Enigma, and the Basher on the Life Stealer. It's either done or about to be done. So now he's got that matchup against the, the Bloodseeker. Now there's no longer that item advantage you were talking about in that 1v1. And these bashers are huge in this matchup. Like, again, the Thunder lineup strong during the BKB as well. You get Skull Bashed. Your BKB gets reduced by a significant percentage here, especially if you're channeling Black Hole. There's going off a cause again. Another BKB forced for nothing. Didn't get the bash, but forced out the BKB on Picasso. That's still a big win. Mantu doesn't but. have it yet. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. On his yeah. courier, he's just not flying it out. Definitely is going to want that. Especially since we've got, we still have the big team fight coming in. Away. 50 gold away. We still got the big team fight of the BKB Black Hole. So Thunder, yep. you know, maybe they're feeling a little nervous. Things have gone a little bad the past Radiant few minutes, top. but they should remind themselves. We've got the big team fight that's going to be coming in. So now that, take it easy now that Basher's flying out, this infest bomb becomes more deadly, right? You can infest the tiny, blink in. If you find an Enigma, you find a Bloodseeker, you guarantee the combo into the Deso hitting him. If you get that Bash at the right time, might be enough to just seal the deal. There are no real hard saves on Thunder. You have potential for a Rubik Shard at some point, which might be very influential in this game, and I think Matthew's eyeing it up. Yeah. He's thinking about four staff and a Shard, so Thunder recognizing this game has shifted a lot, and they need some saves on their end. They cannot just super aggressively play how they want to anymore. All right, I think it's about that time.
The cause is gonna show on the wave mid while the rest of the team, four man smoked up behind. This is Enigma BKB. So he has a pretty free black hole here. You can see Dark Matu somehow bashes him with the reach of a god. <laughs> Dark Mago, I like how he's positioning himself very aggressively, knows his job. He's got a fish for information, right? He needs to be able to reveal certain key heroes and allow Sacred to be able to get the follow-up. They're fighting for mid lane control. It's a question of how deep do they want to push, and I don't think you just want to push into the, the liquid high ground here. You're pushing into a potential buybacks around that dire outpost. Over here comes that infest bomb. Oh, this could be bad for Thunder. Matthew, Smoke's gonna break. They're gonna try and run it in, but he gets the telekinesis off first. Very quick. The cause still farming up the ancients through this. He's gonna come in through the side. The blood right's gonna go off and he gets rupture onto Zai already. Zai, they are gonna be able to catch him out pretty easily. Now the black hole's gonna be able to catch too. Liquid ran in so damn deep and they just stumble into the black hole from Sacred, ready to go. They're gonna be able to run down four heroes as a result. A one for four exchange. Liquid. They just tried too hard for that one. That was just too forced. Like, if you get the jump there, sure, you feel great. But once Matthew lifts and throws you back, all those sirens are going off for Thunder, right? They're just going to yep. put everybody in position. You're going to have to play around some super deep ward. Unfortunate for Liquid was that dire ward on the upper side of that triangle just missed seeing Pekaz. Otherwise, I think they just jump him there. Oh, yeah. And instead, Pekaz gets the free fright coming in the back, takes Zai out immediately. And of course, if you're this deep into Thunder and you Zai haven't seen that Enigma, he is going to destroy you. No way to cancel that. Easy fight for Thunder. Mickey trying to strike Whoa! back here. What a kill! Gets that ward value after all. Mickey, how did he set that one up? No An incredible BKB. pick off that, uh, that we'll see whether or not he gets out here. Oh, he's still got his BKB, so <laughs> nothing really Thunder can do to stop him from walking away. That's an absolutely huge pickup. Like now that ward goes down, but that was the type of jump they wanted the first time. Yeah. And we can see when these PKBs are down for Thunder, Mickey just becomes a god. The Bloodstone becomes way better. This Frost Shield, all the tiny spells become better. Mm -hmm. If they can ever force the BKBs, re-engage after they're down, they're gonna have a bit, much better time in these engagements as well. And of course, Black Hole on cooldown for 90. Thunder have to play a little bit defensive here. But we Matu do have this. the really deadly combination, the refreshers Radiant coming in for the Mars, right? We've seen how, how that can certainly turn things it quite a bit. It can be very nasty. He has a shard as well. So you're looking at quad spear coming out here. Mm. And we saw in those other games, Dark Mago is not afraid to play super aggressive and just start spearing you back. Bounty. He just blink stunned him, man. Damn. The power of vision. Yeah. And knowing that the BKB was still on cooldown from the previous fight that they had. He'll have a little giggle about that one yeah. for sure. Oh, he knows he, he got away with Dyer quite literally standing. murder there. 24 to 14, 3,000 net worth lead. It's been a game that Thunder has led most of the time, but they once had an 8,000 net worth lead. They've kind of let that advantage slip away quite a bit. And uh, Team Liquid now have some of the items and tools that they kind of desperately needed to be able to win some fights. But it still comes down to the initiation, right? We get the right kind of black hole, team fights over. We get the right kind of, I don't know what, I mean, Liquid, you said the, the biggest power is through that infest bomb, right? I still think it's a, their best initiation tool. That said, maybe you don't want to just be the ones jumping into Thunder, right? I feel like every time they try to do it, it creates a very weird concave situation where you're not going to find this Enigma. If you find the Enigma, okay, that fight becomes immensely more free for Matoma Man. But if you don't find him, that initiation can be your worst enemy. So I how do we just, switch that up? I think you play for Roche. You want to force Thunder into you. Okay. Again, what's their initiation? It's going to be Dark Mago trying to hit the Spears. You have a decent time to react there, and you have the saves on Liquid. You have Frost Shield. You have Infest. Zai can jump on the back line. He's closing in on his Basher as well. Very pivotal item in this game. This game's about Roshan, which has spawned, and the next set of items all these fours trying to get to right here. Thunder does have full control over the area. They might just force it here. Especially if Liquid shows Hero's bottom. Yep. Zai. He's going to show in the wave. Pushing in a Siege Wagon wave into the tier three is nice pressure, but it's certainly not enough to kick Thunder out of this Roshan pit. So Liquid. Let's see if they know. Let's see if they make the moves fast enough. Oh, they know. But this is hard to just run in. You don't know where the vision is. Dark Mago has illusions on both ramps as well. Oh, yeah. This is perfect. He sees them all coming. Thunder knows there is no problem here for them fitting shop. Roshan, first one, second one at the end, right? Yep, we got an Axe Shard. Zai, he's even gonna get caught here with a spear and, well, tried to do the roll up there. 
jump in. I actually go for it. Big Spidey needed, but he got the bash. A bash he absolutely needed. Otherwise, the black hole was going to be turned around. Even then, Liquid are still going to suffer heavy losses here. Oh, Matama Man may be trained down. They've got the refresher. They throw out the spear. That wins. Matama Man. Let's go. Oh, what a chain frost. Dark Mako in trouble, but so is Matama Man. He falls. Now it's going to be Mickey versus Because. Because doesn't have the BKB. He doesn't have a way to deal with this magic damage. Now that's the Aegis Where's down the on the side. Matthew also being pulled back in, but they're going to stick on Because. Oh, no, the blink away. They missed the timing on the stun. All oh, crucial to be able to land that one. A kill on the carry was a must have. Meanwhile, the support battle rage on the side. Matthew gets the better of Insania, but he will pay the iron price as he's going to go down underneath the tier two. But he says, I did my job. I got my kill. Cost him a tiny buyback, but I think Liquid is very happy with that outcome. They get rid of the Aegis. They take that fight off the back of Zy just going down for absolutely no trade. Again, jumping Enigma, getting that bash. Super pivotal to Liquid's engagement. It's gonna kind of reset the game here. Sure, you got a shard out of that Roshan. It is on Enigma. Pretty interesting, but yeah. otherwise, <laughs> pretty much reset the map. And Mickey is just getting, he is getting strong, man. He's up to Hex. He's got that Nether Shawl to boost up his resistance. He feels untouched in a lot of these engagements, and he is the real carry. Matumba's there to make space. Matumba's there to make people mad. Mickey's gonna carry it with the damage. Battle of chance between the crowd. Liquid do manage to take that mid tier two before backing away. I, I want to see that moment again of the Enigma because I feel like when they, they jumped him, I feel like he was halfway through the animation of Black Hole. It was coming in and then he got bashed. That was, I mean, just imagine if he gets that off on the two of them. That, that fight Completely is done and dusted. And that's the thing. That's why those bashers are pivotal. Yep. He can Black Hole from 200 health and it might last two, two and more seconds. Mm -hmm. Like, he does not have to be bold to sway this fight completely. That's why those initiations are, they're a nice edge, man. Just a little bit of save. You have this Rubik shard as well. You can lift, throw someone back. Suddenly, that displacement is enough to reset the engagement. Dark Mago looking for something. Oh, no. Invis Tiny, though. And Invis Tiny. Dark Mago, his smoke breaks. But he doesn't know Look, would want to take what this it fight. Was. Yeah, Best like of Tiny, 4,000 HP. They know the Mars is up here. They had some really nice high ground vision to be able to play around, but that kid's de-warded, so the fight may be a little bit more awkward now. Get a different kind of ward down. May have been spotted by the Eidolons, though. I mean, it's all about this Enigma, and it's all about this Lashrak. Does the Enigma get jumped and taken out of the fight? Does the fight the it's about to catch Mago first! He thought he was gonna get a free pick off on the five, but immediately gets hexed up Avalanche, and now they're searching for more. Panda does get a four stamp away. Should be fine. Liquid content with the one pick off, it seems. The tools are coming online for Liquid here. Basher on the Pango, Blink Hex on Mickey. A lot more control, a lot more ways to initiate or counter-initiate on these jumps. Who did end up consuming the shard on the side of Thunder? The Enigma. The Enigma? He yeah. actually did eat it? Okay. Took that Malefice buff. I mean, I guess when they already had the, the pick up on the Rubik and the Bloodseeker. <laughs> there was no really, yeah, I guess the only There's one was left was Pandamu. And uh, that one, maybe not worth it. Get up, get up. They got this on me. Yeah. I'm running, I'm running. I have a vice then. He missed? Running up here, running up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go. I save, I save you. I'll be here, Mick. I'll be here. Yeah, yeah. Kill, kill him, kill him twice, kill him twice, kill him twice. Right now, right now, right now. I, I'm cut off, I'm cut off. You're alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just fight with us slowly. Rubik. I'm on Rubik. Kill the Dubus, kill the Dubus. Or fuck it, kill Ooh, you could see that that little bit of chaos may have been if they just stuck to the game plan of yeah. killing that Bloodseeker twice. Maybe if they just been you know, all in focused on that, they get that stun in time before the blink away. Could have been a very different outcome, but instead we didn't see the end of it. But Bakaz did manage to blink on his second life out of there. But Liquid, it was still a fight that they were very happy with, especially considering where they were at 20 minutes ago in this game. They are actually have a net worth lead for once. And they're actually the ones playing on Thunder side of the map. Boxy, I mean, once upon a time, we were talking about whether or not he was going to be able to get a Blink Dagger to affect a, a, a change in this game. He finally got it. Now he's looking at an Aghanim Scepter almost. No, he swapped that up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got to be that greedy. <laughs> that was like that. Yeah, that's point, a... but... No, his job is just to go in with the infest, tank it up. If Matumba gets the initiation on the right target, he'll pop out. Mm. Honestly, I'm not sure he has to right away if they catch some random support or something either. He is just a beefy boy. So instead, he opts for, well, what he has queued up anyway is the BKB. We'll see ultimately what he completes. Looks like Thunder just 
trying to farm up more items here. It's quick initiation quick. by the fourth staff, a quick one. Not Finn's getting away. Play. Telekinesis on boxing, but Tongue Man's trying to stick to Dark Mago, but he is not getting the bashes he needs. But the follow up is there for Mickey. He's going to be able to get the sight into the stun. He gets There's the blood the zone off as well, and the bash came in. The black hole gets canceled. Mickey deal with Makaj, but the blood zone BKB is too much for him. They can't eat through this last track. And now Zai keeping pace with the rest of the team, trying to hit him with the rolling thunder stuns, but they both blink away. And Panda actually, nice force snap down to low ground. Looks like he may have gotten yeah, away. So yeah. How did all of Thunder get away with this? Oh, my oh, God. They found Panda inside of the pit. I think he goes down, but ultimately, I mean, considering the disaster that it looked at the start, only losing two is not too bad for Thunder. Yeah, that was not the initiation Liquid was looking for, and still it works out. Very nice bash on the black hole helps. Honestly, though, even if that black hole doesn't get canceled, I'm not sure that fight is going Thunder's way. Once again, this Lestrac just has free reign. Nobody is stopping Mickey in any of these engagements, not even close. He's up to Trickster Cloak as well, upgraded from that shawl. He is very tanky. Great job from Thunder to disengage this jump. You're gonna waste a lot of the rage duration. Matumba does have BKB. And Black Hole's gonna come in here. He really wanted both of them. He'll try and take Mickey, but I don't even think Mickey's close to dying in this black hole regardless. Yeah. No, he really isn't. I mean, especially when he gets off BKB, a bloodstone. It's like the invulnerable combination for the last rack. Yeah, he's a god. Nice spear back. back. They're resulting the tier threes, but a spear back is no beautiful. This is an opening out for Thunder. Let's see how many they get. The chain frost's gonna bounce around. Boxy with his BKB is trying to walk away. He's got five seconds till he can blink out. Turn around. Oh, Mickey. Cause getting chased on. Yeah, they're gonna be able to chase out after this one. They've got the Wind Waker running down the Bloodseeker with the spear immediately on the way buyback. down. Dark Mago, can they burst him down? They get the bash required and they do manage to get it. A buyback from Thunder wins them the fight in the end, but it's gonna be costly. They really need to get, I don't know what they need to do off of this buyback besides just getting this, those kills they got. I mean, that's double buyback. Dark Mago and Pakaz buying back there. Tier one and two destroying their economy. You're gonna be begging for an early Roche spawn potentially. Oh God, I don't even know if it's within the window. And the one upside is you're, you pushed your Bloodseeker to level 25 off that fight, which is absolutely huge for this hero. Yeah. You now have double rupture. So now you can rupture someone at the start of the fight and still have one up for that Lashrak to debilitate, debilitate his movement. Again, the Does Lashrak it even stop will die. Lashrak, but... though? I feel like maybe he just uh, pops BKB Bloodstone and runs to you anyway. I mean, again, that's where that displacement can come in. Let's say he oh, gets yeah. ruptured, he gets speared back, he gets lifted back. You force staff him after. I mean, it's, it all assumes his BKB is down and nobody got bashed, but sure. you got to play for these little things at this point in the game. And those are exactly the kind of combinations that we've seen Thunder, I mean, it's what propelled them to this top six placement so far in the first place. We said they're one of the best team fighting teams. They are super good at playing around each other. So that is a very real possibility. They could pull something off like that. They are absolutely one of the best coordination wise. And they're also one of the best in terms of dec decisiveness. Like when they jump, they goddamn jump, right? Everybody goes, it's instant. They know the fight is either gonna be won or lost in that first five seconds. Especially with no buybacks on your one and two. They are trying to finish up this Roche fast. Oh, they've been giving up these all. Roshans, but Liquid, this is the one gonna they're going to contest. This is I don't think they can get there in time. Boxy's not running in the right direction. He's not going to get there. Roshan's going to fall. Thunder going to take the spoils of war. But are they going to get out? I actually went he for it. Axe. He's got the Aeon Disc. He actually made his pick up. He's still up the ages on the Bloodseeker. And what a black hole. There it is for Saken. Locking down the two. Ball, ball they need three. to be able to finish off this life stealer. But he actually gets Wind Wind Wakered by Mickey. Dark Mago needs to be able to hit him with the spear. Oh Apparently not. He just runs through the walls. And that's going to be it. Now the last track fighting for his life against Pekaz. Dark Mago. But it's not good enough. The initiation from Liquid. It comes too late. It comes too little. And now they're going to be run down by Thunder one by one. What a black hole to just find that initiation instead of the other way around. Zai snatches the axe somehow, but that is not going to turn that fight if all of your cores get caught in that black hole. Mickey blinks in in an attempt to try and turn that, but at that point you're all stuck in the same goo and it's just too deadly. Yeah. Amazing team fight from Thunder just baiting off the Roche. Liquid gets split on two different angles of initiation. Could have gone amazing, but instead 7,000 damage getting pumped out from that Enigma. And what can Thunder Ooh. get from this? I mean, they were on the edge of a knife there. They used double buybacks yeah, on no their buys. one and two position. They were one fight away from losing this game. Now they may be in a position to win the game outright. They're going to go for the Raxes. And that was Octarine Spell Prism Enigma. He has another black hole. Are they going to go for the tier force? They're going to start hitting of the tier force. Of course they are, Cap. They of course are going to force are. this. 
They don't know for certain, but there is no buyback on the last rack. They could really try and force this, but the glyph is going to stall them out. They're going to go back for it man. again. This They're going to go for it again. This is thunder. There is no back. You force the buys, or I'm going to take your ancient. One tier four down. Team Liquid, they gotta smoke out here. They gotta get inside. They gotta get on top of Thunder now. A second tier four about to fall. But the jump. Because that's gonna be the Aegis perhaps falling right away. One life down. Boxy popping his BKB just in time. Matuba Man, can he deal with this Blood Seeker? The Chain Frost being Rupture thrown out one. long distance. Matthew pops the out there. Refresh. But he get the infest. They couldn't keep the chain stun out. Because has to be able to reset here, but he's gonna be caught by Boxy. A two-man avalanche looks to be able to get the force half away. Shy chasing after him. Will take a pit stop, finish off Rubik if possible, but they want more from this. They slow down the Rubik. They Pocket want it to turn. panda move. Zai's trying to catch up to the cords with Mickey inside. They've got a batch going out. Dark Bago gonna be stunned up. Because on the run, blinks away. Safe goes with Blink out of Dark Bago. Sacred goes to the BKB. TP Ooh. out. Are they all gonna be able to get away? No, Mickey's gonna deny that. He catches up. Lightning stun. Dark Mago. The spear. Spear away on two, but Zai's there on the side to finish him off. That is two minutes on the clock for Dark Mago. Now it's Team Liquid's opportunity. How much are they gonna get out of this? How much do they want to try? and end the game right here, are right now. Are they gonna now. run it back the other way and try their own throne race here? I mean, two minutes, no Mars. That is a big window. But Oz lost his Aegis, he still has cheese. This is pretty exposable. I don't know if you can fight without the Mars. You're gonna need to land a crazy black hole. I just don't know if Liquid feels super confident to push it that hard. One Saw black the hole. damage coming out from these multiple ruptures now. Swift Link on top of it, Titan Sliver. Bloodseeker is massive. With the stolen split earth on the Rubik, yeah, the right helps. black hole is a game ending combination potentially. Oh, Matthew is just chain stunning them all right now. Yep. Tossing them back into the same splitters. Those splitter. are not less right splitters, and that's oh. going to be it. It sets up the two man black hole. Go, go, that toss. He stops Zai. He doesn't get the bash, but Mickey's somehow still alive. He's got the wind wake going he's out. Healing. The bloodstone healing up, and he's going to be able to take down Picard. No bye. Boxy moves forward. He smells the blood, the water. He tosses back. Finish these heroes off now while you can. Don't let them get back to the fountain. Matthew dies. Panda, we're freezing field to save the game, but it's not good enough. He gets bashed up. Mickey right in front of the fountain. Johnny back fountain. into it. The Wind Waker again. It saves Mickey. Back to the fountain. Oh, toss back over to the side. Sacred pull back in. Zai, he's going to be able to follow it up with the Rolling Thunder as well. The Chain Suns are there. He's got a buyback, but he doesn't have the black hole. He doesn't have any allies. Team Liquid, they can play this slow, they can play this steady, and they can go for the end of the game, but Box has been dropped back into the fountain. What is this? He just tanked it. He just tanks it up, walks away, Avalanche long range distance. The Malefice catches them in the end. Boxy falls, and Team Liquid, they're actually going to have to back out. They've got 15 seconds till the Crystal Maiden, 10 until Dark Mago. With double arenas, they cannot end this. That is all five buybacks on cooldown for Thunder. Did that tiny kill somehow save their... Th I thought they were getting thrown there. I mean, how are they not thrown? How does Mickey even get out of that black hole at all in the first place? <laughs> the toss is the Wind Waker. He's Wind Wake healing in the air. These fights are absolutely crazy. Of course, the multi-splitters and the stuns from Matthew setting that up in the first place. I mean, he got the first get combination. I he thought gets both cores, and he gets the the, the Leshrac who has that Wind Waker to save somebody else. It was uh, the ideal I mean, the scenario. Pull from Insania, the Frost Shield, pulling oh, Bacaz really off, and he can't even get the cheese off. If he gets cheese off there, that's a completely different fight as well. Every little small thing going Liquid's way in these late game fights, it feels like, and they are keeping themselves in it. Very difficult to play these situations into those black holes, but they are finding a way. And again, the tools, they're coming out, right? Aeon Disc for Zai, Wind Waker for Mickey. Some of the saves are there now. It's not so straightforward. And of course, all of the buyback pressure is on Thunder right now. Yeah, I mean, with this moment right here, you see two heroes, 30 seconds on the clock. You see one hero, 90 seconds. We knew there was a buyback on Sacred, but just an Enigma and, and a Rubik to try and hold that, it seemed unlikely, but Thunder still managed to do it. I mean, we say the just a Rubik. Continues. This man's got a timeless relic. I, I mean, Matthew was MVP of that base defense. He oh, was yeah. just chain stunning everybody, stealing everything, staying alive, fighting to the last minute. The veteran of the squad of Thunder Awaken, the only man on that roster who has been here in this position before at a TI. And that matters. When you're in these types of situations at TI, yeah. experience counts for a lot. The nerves start getting to you. These players are feeling the intensity. You're playing the Grand Magus. Mm -hmm. Show up or go home, right? There's not a more stylish hero in the game.
and he is making it work. Ignore that 5% difference. This is a dead even game. 38 to 31, 12,000 net worth lead for Liquid, but it doesn't mean anything. It's all about the initiation. It's all about whether or not we hit the right black hole, whether we get the right kind of blink infest initiation. Who's got buyback? Who doesn't right now? <laughs> well, it's Next most of them without too. a buyback. Like, this is about Roshan at this point. Aegis is huge for Liquid dealing with the black holes and of course getting the second life when you don't have buyback, huge for Thunder. There's a gem in the pit. I assume it's Liquid's by the vision it's giving. There's a DD free for the take and Eddie's buddy, no. Rolling Thunder forward side, trying to fish. Oh, because he he Yeah, because was real scared of getting caught. Understandably so. He cannot afford, I mean, he's so close to getting the buyback gold that he needs. I mean, he's running a steady cap. So <laughs> he is very worried about getting jumped. Yeah. Uh, this is not the ideal top item top for, you know, neutral top. backpack carry at 50 minutes. But mm -hmm. if it saves him in the jump and he gets cheese off, that's the idea. And it might be able to turn it around. He just needs to survive long enough for Black Hole to come in. Pray for no bashes. Tell Thunder can turn these engagements around. I think Liquid is feeling pretty good right now. They still have four minutes. No buyback on Enigma, no buyback on Rubik. The other ones have come up for Thunder. But Liquid have all the vision control, control of the pit, control of the runes. Strength blink up on Mickey, pushing level 28 here. See the gem dropped in the Roshan pit. They want to know the moment that Roshan is up. Oh, yeah. We'll see in a second here whether or not it's going to be an early one or a late one. I feel like a late one maybe favors Thunder Awaken, gives them a little bit more time to farm up their buybacks or get into a position where those cooldowns are in place. They, so they still have three and a half minutes and four minutes left on the Enigma and the Rubik, respectively. Man, it feels like so long what we were talking about is Zai going to get to items. <laughs> and somehow he's here. And not only that, he's yeah. level 25, which means low cooldown on this swashbuckle. And That's he can finish up the Octarine if he wants. So yeah. even lower. You go down to that four-second swashbuckle with the basher. Even if you miss one or you throw one, Enigma goes in. Suddenly he's getting bashed up again. Just becomes way too obnoxious to play the fights for these Thunder cores. And Thunder, two buybacks for three minutes. They don't care. Time to smoke out and make something happen. Yeah, they don't know when Roshan is going to spawn, so they can't afford to just wait inside their base. They kind of do need to get out there, get active. It's all about the vision, all about the jump. Matthew leading the way with one Observer Ward, Aeon Disc and Lincolns. See what he finds. He's going to throw a ward up on the high ground. Spotted. He sees Zai. They go for the initiation. They're trying to grab him. They get the telekinesis at the same time. They went for Insania, but Insania gets the Sinister Gaze onto Dark Mago. They get off the BKB. The two-man spear. spear, the two-man supports. They're both going to fall in this initiation. It's Mickey stuck on the high ground, not able to do a whole lot. Matumba Man playing up. They have the black hole. Zai, can he stop it? No, no Flash Buckle, not enough. No, he's been pulled in. He gets caught. He gets speared. Thunder getting the combination to be able to bring down they Liquid. But they haven't dealt with Big K just yet. He gets another Wind Waker. He blinks forward. He wants to take this. Sacred on the side. Malphus and they're trying to keep this Light Strike at bay. Thunder. But he just continues to go for it. This side, he's rolling through and stopping all of these cores from dealing the damage, allowing Matumba Man to follow it up and get the kill onto the bars. Now he gets on top of Sacred for 12. Sacred, he's getting caught by the Bashes. But coming back out. in. He's cleaning up. Enough? He's cleaning up. He's trying to finish off Boxy. But an infest. A little bit of heal. Now the chase on the side. Not this Flood Earth is going to come in. And it's not enough because he falls. Two dead on the side of Thunder without buyback. The buyback from Liquid with on buyback. the Dire Outpost, just way too powerful. Did they use all of them there? That was every single buyback. buyback. Thunder, I mean, they basically, they won that fight. They, they won the first part they of that did. fight. The problem is they're playing, that's a, that's a problem, right? When you win these late game fights, you're almost at a disadvantage because they're gonna get to use their buybacks and finish off the I mean, fight. Thunder knew that though, and I still think it's the correct decision. You have to take that fight at some point, start to wear through these buybacks. It's a dire outpost penta buyback situation of five <laughs> 10. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, they played this fight amazing. Double spears, the black hole, trying to finish this track, but I mean, Mickey is just an absolute beast Radiant. in these engagements. He lives so long. Killed. They're trying to save him for last, stall him up with some control. Radiant's but Kaz is just going ham. He got cheese off in that fight at the perfect time as well. Mm -hmm. But again, 5v10. Too much manpower Radiant's in the bank for Liquid, and now they're going to take it to Thunder's Radiant's base here, push the issue, no buyback on for one minute on Enigma. Now, what do you do here? I mean, Thunder, they don't want to use this buyback on the Bloodseeker. Are they willing to give up Megas? It looks like it. They say Megas, not a big deal. Buybacks are what is going to put us in a position to win this game if we win one fight against Liquid. I would agree That's with it. that sentiment. 
When there's no buybacks on Liquid side, you win one fight, you win the game. The problem is in Omegas, double. Liquid doesn't have to take that fight. Yeah, they can wait out the buybacks if they really want to. I don't think it's an incorrect play here. Let the creeps do the work. It's almost impossible for Thunder to make a move in the next five minutes while you wait for those cooldowns. I don't think you have to rush this if you're Liquid. You're up 20k, you have the whole map. You're going to see everybody in their base for Thunder. Their lane shove is okay, but it's nothing crazy to write home about. Tough position for Thunder to be in, especially for players who are not TI veterans. This game is winnable. It's not going to be easy. What does Thunder do here? Some interesting decisions to be made. Do they try and push out? the lanes as much as they can and force an engagement even into an Aegis Cheese and Refresher Shard, knowing that Liquid doesn't have buybacks, and they do. But if you're pushed that aggressively, even if you have buybacks, how do you use them correctly? You need like Boots of Travels and stuff, which our Bloodseeker doesn't have. <laughs> so they may just be locked into a situation where they're just going to hold the Ancient. They're just going to sit inside their base and wait for 60 minutes and see if Liquid, if Liquid are going to be patient enough to wait for their buybacks or whether they're going to try and get greedy and find a pickoff somewhere and end the game. You know, Cap, if there's one team in Dota and one player I think about that's been in a lot of mega creep type situation, <laughs> probably Insania with Liquid. I already <laughs> knew where you're going I with feel that like one. There's a lot of games this guy has played, especially with this team where he's been in these situations. I think Liquid's gonna wait for the buybacks. I, I you think, think that all that experience is gonna yeah. catch up to you. I don't think they're in a rush here. I think this game is gonna go on a little bit longer, especially in Dota nowadays. You hit that 60 Amazing minute marker. The neutrals are your friends, right? Sure. Thunder stuck in their base. They're gonna lose a neutral item advantage here. It just becomes monumental. You get the next Aegis, you have all your buybacks up. Thunder's gonna have their buybacks in. Honestly, their heroes are quite good in a base defense situation. You have Enigma pushing towards his refresher, trying to get the double black hole. It's going to be a long way away. Yeah, I'm under choosing to forego that base defense and try and look for something here. I respect this play, but this is like an impossible smoke to hit. I don't have a stance man to confirm this, but I'll just say it. I'm pretty sure Insania has lost the most Mega Creep games. <laughs> Sounds like you're trying to cast a person right player, here. You know? So they're going to play it safe right now. Thunder actually are the ones going to go for a smoke out. See, let's see if we can find something here. See if Liquid are going to slip up at all, but oh, there's no way. There's no way you give anything to him here. Not finding anything just yet. Now, if Thunder is out of their base like this, you're happy to take that fight if you're Liquid. Yeah. And they may just get somebody caught here. Boxy running in. Up. Yeah, Boxy is going to be able to three-man avalanche. Immediate jump, follow-up from the Swatch Buckle as well, but the Black Hole does manage to catch the two of them. There's no follow-up damage, though, because it's only just now showing up this fight. It's a little bit too late for that one. He immediately gets a bit of blade, and Boxy managed to get off the cheese, but it looks like the top of it is going to fall. Two minutes dead. Mickey, he needs to be able to get some heals up. He's got a minute on the ages, so he's going to die here, come back soon. The Chain Frost starts bouncing oh, around. Control. Tops is over. The Chain Frost. Chain Frost, the double Chain Frost the with the pressure. But Cause is healing up, but the toss is coming. Like Boxy finishes off, but the buyback it's coming into play now. Thunder have that extra life where you Liquid do not. Insania is gonna fall. That's gonna be three dead with no buybacks, and everybody is alive on Thunder. The buyback oh comes into play God. for Thunder. They've got an opportunity here. Can they get to Liquid's base? Can they do anything? with this opportunity. Remember, long time ago, they went for the throne. There are no tier fours. <laughs> if they get to that base, that throne is very exposed. They have Glyph and that's it. How much is Thunder gonna try and push this? They know there's no buybacks for two minutes. It's a long window here. Three heroes down. I don't know if they can get there fast enough, but if they do, that base dies very fast, as you said. I still can't believe that three-man dream initiation turned into such a nightmare for Liquid. It looked like the absolute beautiful catch. These two do the not have buyback, but they know they have to make some sort of move. The They're going to try and get the initiation the before they get inside the base. They are also killing Creep Wave at the same time. Lightstrack in trouble. The spear spear up against the tree. They try and get the Thompson away to the side, but the rupture ensures that he falls. Oh, Another two minutes. Is that the game? That might just be the game. Thunder making their way into the liquid base. Nobody to stop them. Panda's going to make sure. Thrown stage guy. Cut he cut it in. He's cutting what the wave. Don't let that Creep go. That away boxy the glyph will stall things out for a couple arena. of seconds but it doesn't matter stay in that arena stay where you are this throne is going down here and now thunder are you fucking game, game one <laughs> against liquid unbelievable 
my god, this team, how do they win from that position? How do they win? It's an almost impossible scenario. They cannot hit a smoke, they cannot hit the fight. Somehow that smoke backfires on Liquid insanely hard. They get caught in a base fight where Bakaz has buyback and gets to come back in. They were two minutes off buybacks for everybody in that engagement. What a demoralizing way to lose, lose, honestly. They are going to have to mentally reset from that game and get back there. But if you're Thunder, oh man, you are feeling yourselves after that victory, snatching it from the literal claws of defeat. Absolutely wonderful. Fighting words going into a game two very much deserved after that performance in game one. Absolutely. Because make a creep comebacks on the main stage, right? EG versus E-Home. Secret versus Mineski. Now we have Liquid versus Thunder Awaken. It's got to take some serious mental resilience to come back after a make a creep comeback like that and lose. If you're Liquid, it's going to take a whole lot. Meanwhile, Thunder are going to be feeling themselves, right? I mean, this is a test of team fortitude right here. There's no other way around it liquid has some of these guys were denied ti last year they come in this year they're on the ropes in lcq they make it through those groups in pretty good prediction pr position they go through this bracket they're in the lower bracket they're on the brink of elimination so many times and yet they are still here for a reason the mental fortitude of this team is out of control and on the flip side thunder they are looking for the highest position ever for an sa team that is why they want that respect this is 11 years in the making for this game right here of SA Dota getting to this point. Can they push their ticket? Or are we going to go to game three where Liquid will test them? Looks like more die. team fight is in store because once again, Tide Hunter Enigma would not be a TI game That's without true. the big boys. <laughs> We're going to have the big team fight spells blown around in this game. And it's going to be an exciting one. To see whether or not Liquid, if this journey has been too long and too hard for them, that game one demoralized them or whether or not they're going to bounce back. EG versus E-Home. We had that, that probably the most iconic Mega Creek comeback game. The For sure. Begins. And that was going into game two. I mean, that game two really wasn't that close. EG. No, it, it's hard. You, stomped. You lose to Megas. It's like, well, if we couldn't beat them then, yep. how do we get there? I mean, I was there at that tournament and that series gave me a heart attack then. I think this game is right up there. <laughs> On the other side of things, we had Secret versus Mineski. That was another game one Mega Creep comeback where Mineski had the game one. They had it absolutely won. It was locked. And then they go into the throne area. They yep. lose it. Secret go for a desperate push in. They do manage to take it. But they go into game two. They bounce back, and Mineski actually takes it. And sort of a iconic what if, you know, like what if they could have gotten that 2-0. So there's two different sides to that Mega Creep come back and going into game two. I mean, you can do it. You can come back. It's not impossible. Nothing is impossible at TI. All bets are off, especially when the pressure gets up like this. We are playing for top four. It's every player's dream for years and years to get here. You're not going to get deterred simply because the Mega Creeps got to your head. That means game two already off the bat. We have a Thunder Draft that is designed to deal with the summons coming out from Liquid. And Liquid trying to pick up the pace here. They have a very fast tempo lineup. Enigma Brood, they can play the map very quick and Ursa can take advantage of any pickoffs. Transitioning into quick Roshan. Roshan number one, Roshan number two with the shard. Exactly what Matumba is looking for in this game. Now the gyrocopter kind of flip script almost. Oh yeah, absolutely. The gyrocopter that we've been seeing outside of today, we, we've seen a lot of times being picked up, counterpicked to try and deal with the offlane Enigma. It's one of the better carries to uh, to address that hero. Instead, the Enigma switched over to the support position. Zai is a Broodmother. Do you feel like Brood uh, that gyrocopter addresses Broodmother as well as it does the Enigma? I mean, also this was a matchup I thought we would have seen a bit more this tournament. I know it used to be very good back in the day. Like the missile gives you vision. You can hunt them down in the trees, the flak to deal with the spiderlings. I imagine this matchup still has to be good for those same reasons. But of course, Brood is building utility nowadays. You're going for the auras. You're going pipe, raid pack, AC type build. This can help mitigate a lot of the AOE damage from Gyro. So I'm not sure how this matchup exactly goes nowadays. I'm sure Pakaz is going to have a fine early game here. There's no way he's going to get pressured too hard on this lane, I think. I say that, and we've seen Boxy have some crazy good shards and kills on the lane. Oh, first blood still open. Matumba Man really wants it here, but the damage coming out from the Disruptor dissuades him from going for it, and he's going to have 
play underneath this tower here. We're currently looking at a situation where I think Thunder is walking away with two lane wins, right? We already talked about the Jarcopter. We've got the Ember Spirit versus Puck matchup in mid, which Dark Mago's doing very, very well, 14 and four right now. And uh, it means Liquid kind of needs to get a, a big W out of that top lane, right? They kind of need to shut down that Titan. I mean, they need to make sure that Matumba keeps farming on this lane. Like, There's a lot of harass that can come out of this lane. Disrupt their Tide with the Gush build. They did this on one of the earlier series versus Secret where they put the Maiden up here just to guarantee that this tied Ursa matchup does not go poorly for them. The Shard, it landed, oh, you said. Trouble. Boxy's been on point with this one, and it almost brings him down here, but Zai actually stumbles a little too far forward. Marcy uses her dirty advantage to toss him into the tower. Matamba Man, though, he's having a hard time dealing with this. The Gush and Thunder Strikes. They spot him in the trees. They're going to be able to get one more round of Gush, and the last hit comes in. Pandabu takes the first blood. Better to go to the, the Disruptor than the Tide, who had to use a lot of his resources to get it. Oh, what a, a nice stun start. from Matthew on the other side of things. They actually throw up a shard. They're going to try and lock in Matthew. Zai, though, he's not going to survive. Oh, he does. And that final shot did not come out from Bakaz in time, and Zai lives through it, so they kill the support. And Bakaz is actually a little bit low, too. Boxy. Oh, is he going to cut the creep wave, or are they going to try and keep a cause under the gun here yeah it looks like they're gonna pull it back reset the equilibrium make this lane even more awkward for because i don't think because is too sad about getting all that solo xp but it's definitely setting marcy back quite a bit yeah liquid supports having the the better exchanges here saini also just denying farming up with that basilius as long as you don't die early on the support enigma you're gonna be pretty happy going into the making you can farm a decent amount scale Perhaps the build the utility. Some damage. Matumba Man is going to have to hop out here. Yeah, this is the downside. Enigma is not helping you much in these trade situations. Matumba's feeling it right now. Yeah. He's going to live for now. Oh, the gush. Salve it's up. up. He can pop it. Got He's going to be able to take away the salve. That is just as good as killing him, honestly. Yeah, even better. Now Matumba has to tank all these waves into the tower, too. He's missing range creeps. Rough CS start for him. Meanwhile, Dark Mago, he has been owning mid in this matchup yeah he's up almost 400 net worth decent amount of cs this is ember favorite for the lane and of course once you get into that mid game the coil has a really big window where you can punish this ember spirit that's what liquid's gonna look to do big question to me is do they have the damage fall up with the coil like enigma is not gonna provide much for it and it kind of comes down to boxy which is why this start is super important for him. And on top of because they're going to try and disrupt some of the damage coming out from that battery with the snowball. Zai life stealing a decent amount. They got to keep their distance from this barrage. That's yeah, level two. He's he's putting the points into the magic damage, not mm. going the flat because of course no spiders till oh, later on. This rotation, this is going to maybe early. catch him out. He's not level six. They want the kill on his side. Did he get the chain on the brood? No, he didn't. It said they're just going to have to be content with the kill on Boxy. Not what they wanted, but at least they get something. And he does get him to level six. Zai still has full wand up as well. I'm not sure he would have gone down anyway. What a... Look at it. He's going to stick around. He's going to leave a remnant. Yeah. I wonder if Zai has spotted that remnant. Radiance this is an interesting move. He TP to mid, so he's not going to base to refill. He is trying to bait out the overextension bottom so he can go back and flank them again. Very interesting move from Dark Mago. Especially to kill the mid catapult first, too. Yeah. He'll sacrifice the rune for this. Regen into Mikkei's hand, but... Liquid has to think about this bottom. I also wonder if it's just a backup plan. I don't think Thunder want to get... If they don't want to feed more kills to this Brood Tusk lane. It's a very dangerous duo. Check in on that top lane here. As uh, how's that Ursa doing now? Sitting at 2,100 net worth. So the Tide Hunter is kept him pressured, kept pretty close. You said it. Enigma really doesn't provide too much right here. Right? The Kraken shell against Malefis and the summons. Yeah, it's not an off lane or ideal for Enigma to kill. I think Thunder's gonna be happy to just keep both cores low net worth on this lane. Yeah. Especially if you can give extra XP to the Tide Hunter because he is getting denied a little, right? That is the power of Enigma here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Panda move think about some stacks as well. You have Tide Gyro. You gotta be thinking about these Ancients. Yeah, certainly.
trying to take as many of the hard camp creeps as possible. Oh, TP to bottom lane. They're going to make that move. Here comes Matthew. Two-man stun. Very nice. They're going to turn around and try and kill Matthew. And they might be able to get him, too. The Snowball's actually going to go over and hit the Gyrocopter on top of that. He wants the kill on Boxing. They're going to be able to glimpse to get it here. Mickey's going to show up with a two-man coil. They might be able to kill both, but here comes the Ember Spirit. Can they finish off Bacaz in time, or is Dark Mago going to be able to shoo him away? Doesn't get the chains. Only lands on creeps there. And he's going to be able to protect his Gyrocopter. The all-important Bacaz carry will be safe. Uh, uh, you can see how much Thunder is thinking about these turnaround bottom. They do not want to let this brute get out of control too early. They don't want to let him abuse Mikazu. Doesn't want to have to buy too much regen. Oh, missed the stun, but they get the slight chains with the damage okay, of the Rocket They got him. Mickey was going to be able to come back in eventually, but it's Thunder who struck first. The Gyrocopter still dies, though, so a one-for-one trade-off. Mago, they have got a glimpse. No snowball, so Boxy is going to be repositioned to a bad spot. They are getting some decent orb damage in, wearing on him. Boxy with the raindrops, staying yeah, alive, getting back to the tower. One more slight should be able to finish him off, he but he actually gets silenced. He's going to have to dive in. This is a snowball dodge. It goes off. He goes back in, throws out the shard. Boxy will eventually die, but now Dark Mako has been put into a position Zai's where back. he may be chased out. And Zai's going to run, try and run him down. He has no more mana. Dark Mago, the orb's going to catch up to him, and he's going to fall underneath the tower. Bacaz is now here, though, and Mickey is already used his jump. He's already used his face shift as well. An orb is coming up in a second. He's going to throw it over to the side. Face shift out. Double kill there. And oh, Zinia now oh. showing up with a mouth. at the top of the coil. They get on top of the Jarcopter. Bacaz thought he was showing up to clean up on the team fight, but instead it's going to be Zai with the ultra kill. Liquid putting him to sleep in this bottom lane for dead. Absolute beautiful skirmishing from him in the early game. And Zinia turning up is just the cherry on top. Extra XP for this Enigma. You'll take it every time. Puts it into a little bit of a tower push. And of course, a lot of those teleports for Thunder are going to be on cooldown now too. So they're going to have to send Tidehunter down here just to defend this. And Bacaz is going to have to make the long walk out of base. Not ideal. Teleport for Dark Mago on cooldown for 70 as well. Liquid got everything out of that engagement they won. And even more so, so much space for this Ursa on top now, right? Matumba yeah. gets to catch up. He gets free solo XP because Enigma went bottom. A dream scenario in this early game for Liquid. Oh, they gotta be careful here. This is Broodmother territory. You're crazy to come out here. Matthew, he's gonna be chased down by the spiders. He will eventually Radiant become one. If Zai gets his way, the last web, the chase down underneath the tier twos, the armor and the regen is not enough to protect him. Mother comes indeed, and yeah. this game is, it's accelerating fast. Remember, this liquid draft, it can convert on the kills very easily. But once Boxy. Matumba gets lifesteal. He's routed Panda Boo. Matumba Man there on the side is going to be able to easily clean up. Glimpse to help Matumba farm. <laughs> yeah. It's early game, it. not going Thunder's way at all. Liquid striking back. Mega Creep comeback, be damned. Radiant I'm gonna take it to you. I think this is exactly the kind of thing you need to be able to wash the, the taste of that, that yeah, loss exactly. in game one out of your mouth. You gotta be able to take an early advantage today. Guys, we got this. They're up by 2K right now, but we still have some answers, right? Thunder, we talked about how the Gyrocopter and the uh, Tidehunter are, are good at being able to address the Broodmother. They're gonna be able to hold this safe lane tower for a while, it looks like. Yeah, Sacred is gonna be a rock in this game. It's hard for them to run into him. They have Black Hole to kill him. That's your best tool. The Tusk can do some serious damage with Tag Team Shards. And of course, at some point, Matumbo will deal with him through the Kraken. But for right now, he is pretty formidable. Zai's just gonna trade farm with him, pull the waves, be happy getting super fat down here, which he is. Full Hood coming out. It's gonna be an early pipe for this Brood. Coil mid, this is your chance to fuse Ember. Easy. Big pickup. Ooh, Shard barely off the mark. And Sacred is here as well. Don't want to dive into Tier 1 Tower with that Ravage ready to go. In fact, they're going to nice reposition flip. Insania underneath the tower. They're going to blow that Ravage now to ensure one kill. Can they get any more? Panda move. Zai in the back, looking for the supports. Maybe? Or maybe the tower. I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't want to fight that Tide. Yeah. No spiders for you. So he could just go back. I mean, this is all a positioning game, right? Between the Tide oh, yeah. and the Broodmother. Wherever the Tide goes, Broodmother can go somewhere else. And uh, maybe it leaves that bottom lane objective open for the taking. Thunder, though, are going to get aggressive here. It's time to shut down Matumba Man. Boxy's read this play. Maybe Jump he can bail him out. Boxy, he's going to snowball on through. Try and or pick him up, but he's just going to be caught inside the Static Storm. A two for one special for Thunder. Ooh, weren't expecting everybody, maybe. I do think Liquid read that move, but. Thunder's brought more people. Very nice conversion for them. This is pretty much the only place in the map they can feel confident fighting, especially when Ravage is down, because Sacred is on brood duty as much as he can be. Pull back in. Glimpse on him. 
beautiful stun. Nice combination there from Thunder. Getting a third pick up here. Stay bounce back. I mean, it was a 3,000 net worth lead just moments ago for Liquid. Now down to less than 1K. Thunder finding the openings in the, the very few places they can find them. Huge kills coming out. Again, this Brood has free reign over this jungle. They don't have any catch form at this point in time. <laughs> Those spiders. Eventually, they're going to take this tower. You kill them as many times as you want. She'll be back with more. Nice little pinata right there. Yeah, that's true. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. I mean, this game stabilized a lot in that last minute. I could have seen it getting out of control, but now Thunder's going to be able to defend this mid tower for a bit longer, standing on 160 HP. Zai will continue to try and send the spiders behind back door. This mid tier one is super vital to the ancient control, which they want to keep up for Gyro. Gyro has very specific farming patterns. You cannot lose too much early map with this hero, or that flat cannon does not go to work. I think it's super right, interesting. Pushing it to him. Just now takes this tower, right? It almost seemed like he just left this safe. I mean, that tower is irrelevant, out. right? Because yeah. he's playing behind it anyway. It's just a free gold. It's any Oh, big whip there on the black hole. Doesn't get it. Foxy going to try and bail him out after that one. The Static Storm just land on two. They may have gotten the kill on the Marcy, but now the rest Chained of Thunder it. are here to be able to clean up. One, two, three. Matumba Man with the Enrage. He's going to try and hop his way out of here, but I uh, know there's no way out of this one. Matumba Man, he's going to be chased down by Dark Mago. He turns around, throws a few swipes in the air, but a one for three exchange to the favor of Thunder. What a beautiful Static Storm. Liquid just overextending into that. Of course, the Black Hole missing doesn't do him any favors. Thunder, again, they're always going to bring their carry to these types of engagements. Picaz will join every fight he feels like he can clean up. Gyro comes down on top. Beautiful chains to keep him in it. The exact fight Thunder won. Didn't even have to expend the Ravage. Oh, didn't sacred. let him grab that one. Still Immediately going to be coiled up with Zai coming in from behind. The Ravage should be able to help him out. The Snowball is going to keep that chain stun on a Walrus Punch to finish him off. Now Sacred, well, he's tanky, but he doesn't really have any help. They're just going to run him down here, perhaps. The Glimpse is going to be able to buy him a little bit of space. Zai's having a hard time. Another round of spells coming in for Mickey, though. And the orb should be enough to get that kill and maybe even a little bit more. Mask he's, he's a god. Yeah. Beautiful play by Mickey uh, baiting that one out with the Invis rune he already had in play. I mean, he's been a monster this series. That first game he played out of his mind. This yeah. one, he has kept them in this early game by a huge degree, finding the coils on this ember. And of course, the kills lead to Roshan, Matumba, claiming it early here while they're skirmishing. Zai. He wants to be able to get over here. I don't think they have the webs to be able to fight in this area. And Sani is going to pop over. Doesn't have the black hole. Just throws out the Malphys, but he's dead. They created the space to get the Roshan. It cost them their captain. But for now, Liquid will be able to retreat with the spoils and Aegis now on the Ursa. You can see Liquid's idea about this game. If they ever break that triangle, Brood has the other side of the map, there is nowhere for Gyro to go. Yeah. If that happens, Thunder has absolutely no map, and their heroes are not mobile enough to get to the other side or split push this game too heavily yet until Ember's online. So Thunder are always going to bring everybody to defend that triangle. Once they defend it, they can make a move. They're trying to find something down here, but Brood is a stealthy hero. Good luck, my friends. And that idea of like how they want to be able to close out the map is why it was so important for Thunder to have those little moments where they clawed back that net worth advantage that Liquid built up. Now they have to do it again, though. Yeah, imagine they didn't get those skirmishes. This game could be over by now. Yeah. This is how explosive this Liquid draft is. You lose one skirmish, you lose one fight. You're going to lose three to four K off every one. Look for the coil. Clean, clean play, and Dark Mago shows just that. Breaks the aggression of Liquid, jumps to the other side, looking for the power rune. Sadly, it's not there. It's going to be a free pickup for Liquid. Mickey gets an illusion rune. I mean, look at how Clump Thunder's playing. Like, they expect Liquid to fight them. Dark Mago's not in this top lane. He's not split pushing, trying to draw Liquid away from the center of the map. Very defensive formation from Thunder here, just trying to protect the Gyro's farm and get him to that Ags where he will really accelerate. Do you agree with this concept? Do you think it's better to just be playing super conservatively right now? I mean, he's worried about this coil. This coil setup is just so scary for him. He has no defensive capabilities against it. Ravage on cooldown, finally up. But you're giving Liquid an opportunity to invade here with force. Everything up, and of course, Pipe just online for Zai. This might be the signal. No more Ancients for you, Mr. Gyrocopter. They're, they're testing it. You go lead the spiders in the ancient area. Oh, that's nice too. Block it out. 
don't let him get any more stacks up. They're going to try and deal with them, and they actually do manage to kill it, but Marcy's still in the area. So the hard camp spawns, but not the Ancients, and that's well, the more important one. Don't have to invade it if there's nothing there to invade. Yeah, exactly. Smart play from Liquid, and now they're going to find Pekka's top. Big pickup if they can get it. Chain stun, while response. Yeah, he's completely surrounded. Thunder have been so worried about dealing and trying to open up this triangle that there was no one to help out because, oh, a rupture into a static storm. That's exactly what they're gonna gun for here. But they've gotta be careful of the life steal. He also has the Aegis, so they don't wanna overcommit for this in. too much. But Dumb Man's gonna fight back. The slow and dark Mago, he's not able to get very far away with that Remnant, but they will manage to finish out. Oh, he got off the enrage. He's out of mana, he's being burned out. The coil as well on top. Dark Mago falls. There goes the first life of the Ursa. The Coil about to finish up. They're gonna run down Matthew pretty easily here. The Tide Hunter is also very low, and they're gonna just use the Black Hole for it. Commit, get the kill. They have to run away from this Tier 2 tower with the Glyph going out, but everyone does survive on Liquid. Link revealed the cement, the kill. Of course, Gyro dead that whole time, cannot sway that fight. And Liquid just abusing the map control right now. That kill on Gyro top at the start of all of that, that's because he has nowhere to go. His Ancients get blocked, his jungle's taken over by Brood. Because has no room to play this game right now, and Thunder know it. That's why they're trying to grouping, trying to find that five on five. Liquid just playing it super smart, not giving it to him, opting for these skirmish type engagements where their heroes shine. But Tumba knows there's no damage for him here. It yeah. just takes way too long to bring him down. He has Aegis on the back of it. And that diffuse of that inhibit, he blows on Dark Mago. Slows down the remnant, it doesn't go very far. He burns out his mana. Yeah, diffusal pickup, super valuable this game. The mana burn on all their cores is amazing, right? These are not super high mana pool heroes. It's gonna be devastating. Crazy part is I think some of this, I mean, it's happening around the tier two at 18 minutes. I mean, that's a dangerous area to fight, but Liquid, fearless in that regard, continue to fight underneath these tier twos. They could run down Sacred and take the bottom. Again, one fight, every kill, leading to objectives for this Liquid lineup. Every one of these little mistakes that Thunder makes, and they're hard not to make at this point. Mm -hmm. Cementing this game even more, you're up to 8 or 9k gold lead at 19 minutes. You're going to have that second Roche coming up within the next minute or two as well. Matumba's going to be happy to clean that up real fast. And of course, you have Enigma Tusk support. These are two heroes that are going to scale beautifully into the late game. You're not even necessarily in a rush this game. Liquid is feeling very comfortable right now. And in terms of comeback for Thunder, you have this Gyro Axe, but Axe is only as good as the camps you have to farm, and <laughs> he still doesn't have many. Zai is just yeah. continuously blocking half these neutral camps, scouting with the spiders. Doesn't even have to show his hero. The catch is pretty limited outside of a smoke or this ember just remnanting in. And of course, if Dark Mago just remnants in, there's ever a coil there. Pretty much dead off the back of it. What, what is the play against this when your camps are being taken so much? I mean, you're talking about smokes. Do they, do they just try and get to the dire jungle, the dire triangle? Like, how do they open up the map to get across that far? I mean, you smoke and catch the brood if you think your catch is good enough. You okay. smoke the enemy triangle where the carry is likely going to be. If you think you can get there, honestly, your moves are pretty limited. I think in a theoretical world, Liquid can read most of what Thunder wants to do here, right? Mm. Uh, they're just so closed off so fast in this game. The towers are down. I mean, there's only one space you can be, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And with the vision of the Spiderlings constantly going, you see every, every so like 30 annoying. seconds or so, they're gonna show up in the triangle, they get a little information. What's going on here? Oh, that's because farming. Oh, there's a tide hunter sitting in the river. So they kind of will, they will always get a pretty early warning sign if uh, many heroes are missing on the side of Thunder. But the onus is on Liquid to continue to get these pickoffs that they've been getting before, and you could see Mickey wants to set something up here. No, they're actually teeping into mid. They see, what do they see? I mean, they saw him top, which means time to invade the jungle, right? Okay. Looking for this Ember. Saw him on this mid ward. Oh, does have an illusion rune. Maybe some dodge potential here? Yeah, possible. He's gonna have to do a lot because he's gonna be coiled. So he immediately pops it, tries to get the uh, sounds out, the out. static storm. It is gonna be a big bailout here as the stun is gonna be on Boxy and keeping him chained out. It does allow Dark Mago to get away. Great reaction from Thunder, a full reaction from them. Again, gotta be careful about those smokes, right? Thunder can only be in one part of this map. It's pretty much triangle and they're tier two mid. That's not the area you want to fight. Mickey identifies it very quickly. If you get that kill and get out, you're pretty happy. Forcing reactions, not too bad. As long as you're farming elsewhere on the map. This is where Insania being top is actually very vital for Liquid right now. Because he's making sure they're continuing to extract more out of this map than Thunder, regardless of what's happening around that tier 2 mid. And he's scaling. He's pushing to BKB right now. 
Like, he's going to have very fast blink BKB. This is not the raid pack Enigma from offlane. This is just, I'm going to bleep, I'm going to BKB and hole you, and what's your answer? There is no answer in this game. The only answer is very late game when Gyro has bad satanic territory and you just tank it. Yeah. But you're tanking a position five Enigma's black hole. Yeah. It's not even that amazing here. So Insania is cruising to his timings in this game, and that just makes it harder to contest the Roshans as well. Like, if he gets to BKB before this Roche spawns, which looks super likely, can you even take that fight if you're Thunder? And if you don't take that fight, I don't know if you're winning this game. It becomes very difficult. Yeah, it certainly sounds like uh, no matter what's kind of happening here in these small little skirmishes, these little moves that are being countered and stuff, it feels like Thunder may win some small, small little battles, but they're losing war. I mean, I think... Theoretically, Dark Mago maybe has to just start playing more aggressive on the map, try and push these sidelines a little deeper and get away before Puck finds him, before Enigma can black hole him. Because otherwise, you're just losing so much net worth here now. 11k, you've been clumped for so long, and he's not even close to BKB. Like, this Ember is basically farming nothing right now, right? Yeah. And that is a Don't sentence as good as death. They've got the Wraith Pack on the Tidehunter. It's probably a big reason why they're smoked up right now, but they're not finding anything. They go through the Radiant Jungle, but Team Liquid, I'm not sure they must have just made the read off as fighters. They're playing pretty defensively. In fact, it almost looks like they're going to go for a smoke of their own. So Thunder, if they try and push into this mid-tier one tower, it could be a dangerous fight for them. They've got the wards on Tusk, and they've got BKB on Enigma, so uncounterable black hole here. Really, there goes the coil. A no BKB, Ember Spirit, susceptible to so much here. If they can stay on top of him, first him down before he gets the jump away. He does make it to the and he jumps out. But there's a black hole from Insania. A three-man pick up the Ravage counter goes out. But the Rage was already down from Matumba, man. He shrugs that one off pretty easily. Thunder. Now pops the BKB. Thunder, they need to be able to break open this fight now. Blowing the buybacks like this, it is a must win. They need to be able to get a pick off or two. It's going to be the glimpse on his side, keeping inside. Insania comes back. They have to get this Broodmother kill. Matthew actually picks up the kill onto Insania. At the same time, Boxy gets run down as well. They try to bail out Zai, but actually feed some extra kills oh. over to Thunder and a slight change that is barely off the mark. A little unlucky there. Didn't get the puck. Maybe still getting the Tumba Man, though. He's bonus in Rage and his BKB. Yeah, if they glimpse. spot him, get the glitz, pull him back in. Because is ready to go to clean up huge the kill, kill on the carry. Absolutely huge kill. They get that Street Gold, almost a 1,000 to Bakaz. He is so far ahead now. And of course, Roche spawning during this interval. He just sat there and turreted the whole fight. He's getting sidekicked on top of it, something we didn't mention, but yeah. that flak plus a sidekick is absolutely deadly if he goes unchecked. Yeah, Curious. who needs a satanic? <laughs> exactly, build your own. I mean, that black hole is beautiful from Insania. Coil on the best targets you can get, everything going right. But Bakaz, he's in the back. Double buybacks for Thunder on their supports to push it through. Yeah, look at him. I mean, the three-man black hole looks so pretty, but because is totally uncontested here this entire time, as is the Wraith Pack, yep. which is negating so much damage there. And these are these are two Thunder supports who, when they come in off the buybacks, can still have high impact. Yeah. The glimpse, the, the rebound, the positioning and stuns can make sure Pekaz can hit people. And there's that flak sidekick just going to work. It's gonna, something Liquid has to think about. Now, in the end, Dark Mago does end up dying. Mickey jumped back in and claimed that kill, but obviously it was still a huge win for Thunder, who, I mean, even if the net worth lead is still 10K after that, they, they stopped the bleed up, right? They yes. got out on the map, they got some big farm, they got the Gyrocopter to his next progression of items, and our Ember Spirit, does he have the BKB yet? That could be a serious game changer considering the Close. way they're throwing that coil at him. Yeah, he'll get it in 200 gold. Now he's being able to push bottom lane a little deeper. Of course, the trade is Roshan. Thunder could not claim it after that fight. So Matumba's progression is still going to be good here. BKV, Aegis, and Shard to the Fuzzy Wuzzy. He's a lot tankier than before. But perhaps the biggest thing out of all that is Pakaz lived through that too, right? Yeah. Sure, this win percentage is 20%, but this is a draft designed to function around that one hero with the flat cannon, with sidekick, going to work, dealing 90% of the damage. This game is just, if Pakaz gets checked, the team fight falls apart. Radiance if he has free reign, his fights are a little closer than the net worth shows. It's going to be the ultimate hard carry setup for the player who's ha probably had one of the best carry performances at this tournament and this year in general. I mean, honestly, I think you just black hole him. 
Yeah. I don't know if you have to feel too pressured to black hole much else in this game if you're Insania. Sure, if he's elsewhere on the map, you see the freebies, you take it. But it seems like you just black hole the gyro all in him. Where's the fight after that, right? Speaking of. <laughs> well, not black hole much there. Uh, Insania. He did not expect to find the hard carry in his own triangle. This is the t type of thing Thunder wants happening when they're in this position as opposed to earlier. They don't want to all just be clumped around mid. They want the Tide to be able to deal with that. They want the Ember and they want the Gyro out on the map, at least somewhere cheeky. Pushing some deep side lane, farming the enemy side of the map. Now that you have BKB on this Ember, he's a lot more confident to do that. The cause can do it with backup all the way to Daedalus now. Gyro hits hard, man. Zai, he's been working down all of these towers. We saw early on he was working on that mid tier one tower. Now he's actually trying to take that mid tier two and take over more of that triangle like we've been talking about. Yep, still sending the spiders and he's actually going ags on Brood this game. Something we saw him do earlier today. He just prefers it. Likes the playstyle of having these snares in the back, rooting supports, rooting Ember when his BKB is down. Yeah, they're super obnoxious, man. Yeah, we actually really didn't get to see that Aghanims put into play too much in that last game. It felt like he came in at the tail end of it, but he'll definitely be able to make use of it in this game as uh, Thunder. They were holding on for a while here, but Dark Mago gonna be jumped on Asher here. On keep Ursa. the chains done. He's got the illusion to be able to Ooh. jump away. Nice pickup. Illusion runes save lives. It's done it once and twice now. I mean, he's lucky uh, Skull Basher decided to save his proc for later. <laughs> yeah. He will take that RNG and walk back to his fountain with it. Thinking about who's luckier today? Seems like I am. Butterfly for because so Matumba man he's gonna eventually gonna need that MKB. Wasn't that uh Team Spirit's best strategy at the last TI? Yeah. Luck. Sometimes that it, that's all you need in Dota, you know? <laughs> you can draft your heart out, you can play your heart out, but throw a little luck on there. Mm, goes a long way. Now you're a champion. Twenty to twenty-three. Twenty-nine minutes in Team Liquid. They've had tight control of this game for the most part. A couple of slip-ups there, particularly then that mid-fight. And it, is, it has allowed Thunder to get out on the map. They've continued their progression in farm, uh, both for the Ember Spirit and the Gyrocopter. It's definitely the Gyrocopter who's taking the majority of it. But with Dark Mago now having a BKB, he can play more aggressively out in these lanes because he doesn't have to worry about just being locked down by the Coil alone. Has to be careful of that Basher, though. But I think this is turning into a game where Liquid is just going to farm to their late game timing and just understand you just all in this gyro and a lot of the damage disappears. Might have to do it through buyback. But I think they're happy getting there. They, I mean, they have very crazy late game, right? You get to level 25 puck, all of a sudden your BKBs don't mean as much anymore. That sounds like it's a long way away, but he's level 21. He's got Octarine. He will farm the map very fast. He's got Arcane Rune on top of it actually right now, so... Mickey is very ready to join anything. And I feel like Ursa is one of the, the ultimate, he's both the, the hard carry and he's kind of like the anti-carry in many yes. ways, right? When, especially when he gets that level 25 talent as well, right? Like who stands up against the, the double like 16 hitter? Dark Mago gets caught. The bottom lane, BKB going off, but Boxy denies him with the Walrus Punch. The burst is crazy. You have Tusk and Ursa jump at the same time. I mean, it was just with the puck there, but imagine Ursa hitting you with the tag team with the punch. Yeah. Gyro really has to watch his position in this game. Even this Tide, he, he can get destroyed pretty fast. Now, they do have an interesting timing coming up here for Thunder. The Aegis is expiring, and they almost have a Blink Dagger on the Tide Hunter. It feels like that's something that is pretty crucial. Most of the time, they've just been responding to whatever Liquid's been doing, but with a Blink Dagger on Tide, they can finally be the true aggressors of a team fight. You can find the jump. <laughs> that's easier yeah. said than done when you've pretty much been stuck in a third of the map for the whole game. You have Spider scouting, you have Ursa who can frontline, maybe get that ult off. Puck is getting untouchable at this point. In terms of the Octarine with the cooldowns. You're gonna have to win some fight Radiant with this Gyro. And if you lose that, attack. the game basically just ends. Liquid's just cruising into the late game here. I don't think they're sweating at all. Aeon disc up for Mickey as well. Can't even really jump him anymore. 
And like you were saying, this Ursa Gyro matchup in the very late game with the backup he has, the Tumble's gonna be happy to just jump this Gyro, abyssal him, take him to town. Coil going out in the back lines here. Looks like they're gonna deal with the Disruptor first. Pipe goes out, Sacred clearing out the spiders where they can. Boxy's actually gonna snowball away from the enemy team. Looks like they're calling for a reset. Double damage in the top river gets denied. Liquid happy to poke here. Can we keep it up? Mickey now with that double damage. Blink Sport getting some ideas. The spinner snare not gonna catch anybody. Oh, that shard almost locked in sacred. That could have been nasty. Not a lot of four staffs are repositioning on Thunder side. Oh, he's got to be careful. That spinner snare. Oh, no. The walrus punch into the straight up physical damage of the Ursa. The BKB twice now. Does Pekaz. not save him. And now Pekaz steps a little bit too far forward. Hold they call on him. The black hole pulls him back to his doom. Mickey's going to jump forward. There's just not enough heroes alive. He's going to try and chase him all the way back oh, down to the fountain. It. There is going to be a buyback immediately from Mago. See if they can kill this puck. It's so important. Boxy, he's trying to hang around. See if he can bail out his Trees. buddy. Mickey's going to use the to ensure that Dark Mago can't pursue, he TP's out successfully, bye-bye. Not today, Thunder. I'm gonna have to be a little faster next time. Mickey just putting on a show on this back line with the puck. Late game puck pushing to that strength link. Good luck catching this man, whereas on the flip side, Dark Mago's game is just so hard. Random spinner snares. This black hole can come out of him, the cool and come out of him. Boxy can punch him into the nether realm. Yeah. That was his buyback as well. Oh, no! And the dieback as well. Absolute disaster. Mago cannot be feeling good about that. 70 seconds down. Team Liquid, I don't think they're necessarily going to go high ground in anything. Third Roshan is coming up, but it just further cements what was seemingly already like an insurmountable lead. Now, 25K. I don't know, you're gonna need, I mean, they already had one miracle in game one. You're gonna need a second one if Thunder wants to close this out 2-0. That was a miracle win. I don't I don't know what this one would be. <laughs> I don't think there is a term that applies to it. This game is pretty solidified for Liquid right now. You wait for the next Roshan, you get Aegis on Ursa, and you take the jump fight into the base. As long as you check Gyro in the fight, there's not a lot of turnaround damage that comes out at this point. Now, you talk about luck. It's a fast Roshan, too, so Team Liquid. They uh, have any vision inside the pit, which they've got spiders and stuff. You should know about it pretty quickly. I mean, you can't even get there, these spinner snares. Just slowing Pekaz down. That's true, they jump. jump a Pekaz. BKB goes no off. The bash is so the shard. It's blocking him in. He needs some help. The lifesteal isn't keeping him alive well can't enough. But Toma is eating through it. Now the black hole goes down. But he can't really stop it. And Sadio walks away. Pekaz will similarly limp on outside. Looks to chase him down. But he couldn't quite finish him off with the nukes. And it's Matumba Man who always dies. The enrage goes off. Dark Mago, he needs this kill. The blink away from Matumba Man. He's just outside of the slide. Won't be able to catch him there. Mago now with a BKB on cooldown. is in some trouble no here. He it. walks his way back. Slide of Fizz trying to dodge his spells. Up. But here comes. Comes Matumba Man, he's back into play. Mickey on the front lines as well. Spitter snare after spitter snare. Matumba Man now pouncing in, life sealing up a little bit more. There it goes, double kill, running him down underneath the tier three because he needs some help. The buyback there from Adam no will help. not be able to help him. The help is game three, I believe. Puck pushing level 25 now. Oh no, Panda Boo. Leave him alone, he's just a four five position. He gets knocked out. What a recovery here from Liquid, man. After that game one. GG, that's it. Thunder tap it out. Matter. They say, we'll give this one to you, Liquid. We'll see you on the battlefield for game three. What a game three it's going to be. That was just the complete turnaround. Everything that game was in terms of closeness, this was not. That was Liquid domination from minute five onwards. They closed the map out. Brood strategy executed to perfection. Force Thunder to one area, don't overextend into it. Slowly squeeze every camp out of that map. Half of them were blocked by Broodlings the whole time. Sure, you have a Hyper Farmer carry and Gyro who can get buffed up by Sidekick. Lightning in the hands. Afterwards, we're at the pop-off from their coach. Respect SA, you shits. Thunder in the mouth. But it's easy to have that kind of pop-off after that game one. How do you do it after that game two, which was probably a demoralizing loss? Yeah, that one was maybe a rougher game to lose than the first one because now you're going into a game three and you had all your momentum disrupted. You really got controlled on the map. It felt very clinical. I always thought those types of games can be... They're rough to come out of and already Matthew 
Somebody give him an out. He's going to be able to leap away. Ooh. Just Marcy things, everybody. That's a nice way to start this game off. Yeah, it's going to feel good. You know, it's almost certainly a first blood that was going to be given away, but Matthew gets away ever so barely. And it looks like Thunder Liquid still want to have a clash here. Zai is spotted out because he's going to go for the hook onto the bounty rune. Is anybody going to tank it? Yeah, they're going to just chase him away, make sure there is going to be no hook. So that is going to be three bounty runes minimum for Liquid. There's still an awkward one sitting there in the top river area, but Thunder, they may have not given away the first blood, but it is going to be a rough start for them. Anyway. They're going to challenge Pandemo here, try and keep him off the lane a little bit. Not the worst idea, get some efficient trading out before Undyne gets there and can zone the Tusk in the one-on-one. -on -one. But of course, Matthew, Ooh. never far. That was clean. Boxy, not even taking a moment to adjust. He's been landing some great shards all, well, I was going to say all day long, but really all tournament long. I remember from that game one, they tried to dodge this Enigma Lifestealer matchup, and obviously they had a better matchup to throw it into, but this time, they could have done the same thing. They could have thrown Pango in a side lane, could have tried to go for that. Instead, they're just going to man up, take the matchup, because they want this Pango mid. They want the Ember Pango matchup. They do not want to put the Leshrac there, which will force Lesh to this three position on Zai. Perhaps a little farm parity. I say that, and every time I've seen an offlane Lesh at this tournament, it doesn't seem like it gets any yeah. lower farm priority. So maybe not too much overthinking in terms for liquid but maybe just a comfort thing like mickey just wanted this pango mid it's a nice melee on melee matchup and pango getting more farm in this game is pretty nice right there's not a lot to control him outside of that black hole especially if he gets to like bash or ag's territory they're trying to secure range root range creeps and nice Saving bailout hook. from bakaz so you watch that they denied their own range creep and then he had to hop in to secure the range creep uh, for the side of thunder but it did put him in a little bit of danger fortunately because it's a nice hook to bail him out ultimately i also want to say like i felt this draft picking this pudge was pretty ballsy like you're yeah. in a game yeah. three elimination your whole year on the line and you go to pudge carry this hero can show up in the biggest ways but he can also flounder a bit Especially when you have that Marcy, it's not a sidekick partner. So you're losing some value there. You can throw it on the Ember. Feel really great about that in the mid game, but it's not like last game where they had the Marcy Gyro. You're just powering up a monster. On the flip side, if Bacaz is feeling it, you gotta go with it, right? And I think on on Dire, Matu is feeling this lifestealer. Like we've seen him pop off on this hero over and over this tournament. He's not afraid to play it into the Enigma here. Yeah, you had some suggestions. So, uh, you know, I called out Lifesteal immediately. You said, I actually prefer the Ursa. What do you think the difference was there between those two carries? Because either one would have been a great choice against Pudge here. Sign from God, I don't know, you know? He <laughs> yeah. felt it in his heart. I think if you feel the hero, you can always pick 10 heroes in a, in a position in a draft and they can probably be executed. But if Matu's feeling the Lifestealer, it's one of his classic heroes from way back in the day. Could be his last game. Gotta go with what Ooh, you feel is over right. The splitter is only gonna be able to land on the Marcy, and they got the hook on his eye. But cause close range gets some serious damage onto that last rank. Both teams are gonna limp away. No first blood just yet. Three minutes in. Got to be careful of the sticks in this type of skirmish lane. Boxy up to eight charges. But cause holding on to his ten. Do not want to get over baited into a tower, into the hook. Bober, they're gonna round two. Into Pekaz, nice shard. Beautiful shards. My God, the hook around blocked by the range creep, and they do manage to get the first blood as Marcy falls first, and with the hook on cooldown, because it's gonna take a stick. lot of damage. They're gonna go for it. the stick is gonna be used, but underneath the tower, they've got the creeps to be able to tank up. They get both the kills in this lane. Team Liquid, this is a huge victory, not just for those kills, but look how many creeps are dying without anybody to collect. Yeah, Matthew's gonna try and collect Zai a little bit, but no tag to aggro to bank on. Trying to get body box. Oh, dodges split. Awkward nice shard. By Matthew, because it's gonna come back in soon. Can he hit the hook? This is so Dead important. Again. Hit by the snowball. If he lands He's it, hit this. the mind games, which is he gonna go? Left or right around the tree? Because they're oh, all oh, the monster. Because the biggest the hook, hook of his life. Honestly. It felt like that hook was so important <laughs> just because this lane was going so poorly for them. A big W, I think, for just the emotional uh, tie here of Thunder. Perhaps the biggest hook of the tournament, the morale boost that comes out from yep. that. If you miss it too, you just feel demoralized. The Bacaz, Zai putting on his dancing shoes, but Bacaz a little bit better. That said, thanks for a good part there, not done. But this is not, <laughs> this is not a dance at all. This is a weird do-si-do -si -do where it looks like Bacaz 
is going to be run down by Zai and Foxy with no help coming from the Marcy. And no teleport for 25, 10 second differential there. He cannot get back to lane. The lane's up super far as well. I don't even know if they can keep playing this. This is just a disaster of a safe lane for Thunder. Yeah. Especially for a hero like Pudge, who you do not want to lose early XP on. He's not some super flash farmer until he gets to the later point with the Ags and you're in a rush to get there where you really accelerate. The pump fakes, there's so many of them. The mind games are extreme and he gets Zai. Now, Zai had a good laugh about that one. Huh? Yeah, he did, he did. It's good to see that even under the pressure, a reminder, this is the last game before we head to the finals, before we secure our final four teams. One more is going there, and uh, it's either Liquid or Thunder. All right, here's... You see the team still having some fun. Here's trialing now, just okay. to try and keep the Pudge in the lane. They're going to bring the Undyne. Right, barely off there. No that would have been a great hook into a tombstone setup. Remember, Thunder, not too pressured by this. Enigma can be a little self-sustaining. That said, Matthew will choose to go up here anyway. See if he can maybe pressure Matumba. Try and harass him a little on an overextension, a missed rage. Six minute power runes are coming up here, and uh, looks like the mid lane matchup has gone pretty well for Dark Mago. He's uh, up in the CS. We'll see whether or not he bears well in the rune battle and the luck of the draw. No, it actually Insania may not be luck. The crystal carrying it. Insania is here to secure it. He's going to grab the hand away one. from Mago. No slight steal attempt, and. Uh, very nice rune steal from Liquid. That would have been a huge rune for this Ember in the early game. Now he's going to transfer it into some uh, aggressive help. Oh. Does have the rebound away, so they're not going to chase after him. Meanwhile, Pandemu, Undying, very much dying down here. This lane has been an absolute train wreck for Thunder down here. Yeah, they tried to switch it up by having the Undying down there because I guess with the Marcy, they have better kill potential on, on just feasting on Insania and killing him over and over again. But that last death had to hurt for the Undying because he dropped the Tombstone as well. That's just an extra half a hero bounty. I mean, if you remember that first game, it was because getting the first blood, getting out to the huge lead, Zai shut down. Yeah. This is the flip script entirely. Zai is way out ahead in this game on an offlane hero that maybe he shouldn't be getting this much, but when he does, just takes huge advantage of it. Going to Lightning build. This is a killer Lashrak here. He's not going to mow down the towers, but he's mowing down your life. Thunder already having some issues to address in this early game. Puts more weight on Dark Mago's shoulders to maybe make some rotations, try and get Bacaz back. Pandemu, he hasn't even been laning, he's just been fighting for his life. Foxy's going in deep here, but there's going to be some reinforcements. Dark Mago's going to show up with the help of Matthew. A splitter to try and create some opening for Foxy to get away. Doesn't land, so Foxy should be chased down here. He's going to play a little game of Ring Around the Rosy, but it's not fair against that Flight of Fist. Can't dodge that. I mean, these are necessary turnarounds. You cannot let your Undying get abused and pushed out of areas this much. Especially when you're gonna try and contest runes here, which it looks hard for Thunder at this point. Usually you want to contest a six and eight with Marcy. She's so strong in these early skirmish fights with sidekick and rebound. Especially with a hero like Ember. No spirit here wants to give up the runes. We're already seeing Boxy come back in mid for the repill. This is for the eight minute. Or maybe more. Had the stick charges. Needed that for the mana to Radiant's be able to jump away. Is under attack. Dark Mago will get it. Illusion. Not super useful, but not the worst. All this said, all this skirmishing, it does create a one-on-one -on -one scenario between Enigma and Lifestealer, and I think Sacred's pretty happy with this. Yeah. Again, he has a very fast Vlad's and a very fast Six. See if they can burst inbound. They have so many idols with the black hole. The Infest is up. And no! What? I thought I heard that Infest sound go off, but it looks like just a little tiny little time was left. We're gonna jump into that creep. I think he heard it too, but hearing it, not the same as uh, getting it off. Yep. And that's just a perfect rotation, perfect timing to use this black hole, the extra Vlad's damage, maybe just curing that kill. Sacred off to a very good start. And I feel like Enigma is one of his heroes this tournament, whereas that Tide is not. I mean, we're looking at the stats. I think they have a 0% win rate with that Tide. Whereas this Enigma is way higher, so you're not in the same scenario as last game, where you're getting your map pressured super early and you have to react. Sacred is going to be able to take control of this game. Nice, nice pull back into the Tombstone. Lock him down and die. 
We have an early grave here underneath the tier one tower. Dark Mago looks like he tried to come in, clean up, and does in fact get the crystal bait in. And hefty amount of damage with the orb of corrosion. That physical is chipping away at Liquid. Both mid game boxing will have to retreat. Even TP the Enigma. I think this, Eni this Enigma TP ended up being a mistake just because they thought they were going to overextend into a fight. Yeah. Doesn't end up being there. He doesn't even have Black Hole. I honestly think this was. Just a mystery by Sacred here. He would much rather be top already taking that tier one. He's gonna have to make the long trek now. Part of that is the pressure of TI, right? We always say yeah, that teams yeah. are more likely to group up, stay together for team fights. Mickey already so dropped low. pretty low here as uh, he got the bottle charges. Yes, nice hook over as the shard plays against Boxing roll here through. for the roll in from Mickey. It's trying to keep the chain stun onto the Ember Spirit, and they do manage to get it with a snowball afterwards from Boxy. A worthy trade off because was not able to get. That kill on the tusk fast enough, it seems. Abusing that tombstone cooldown. Again, this move is even more punishing because Enigma is Radiant's still walking back top down. after that TP tower. bottom. So you right. don't get all this top pressure. This tower would be far dead by now. Instead, you're gonna have Pakaz go up here. Even more awkward in, in a way. Here's the banning this bottom tower. Didn't get the fight you wanted. Liquid making some good fast moves. They were pretty low for that engagement, the slights. This is a member that can go to town this game. A lot of physical damage coming out versus the low armor. Yeah, certainly. He is playing with him down here. He's got magic wand charges. Dark Mago, is he going to go after it? He's, He's going. going for the He's red going. light. They need to be able to stop him. Boxy, he does just that. Oh, okay. All right. And Sadie is dead. And now, Boxy? Nah, let's not chase into that tower. That might be a little much. Thunder are winning both in that lane, and they're taking the top lane at the same time. So. Yep, 10 minute catapult. They'll finally convert on it. Looks like Mickey wants to defend. No ult for seven. Powers is dead. Yeah, it's going to die anyway. They didn't have the Rolling Thunder to roll out Oxy catch. Too. Maybe they stick around. No, this was not the clean move that I think Liquid wanted it to be. I think they wanted to be able to catch them while they were taking that tower, but cooldowns and TP's not fast enough. Yeah, both teams overreacting a little bit for these safe lane towers. Not the team fight they were looking for on either side. Something to mention is sure, this Lashrak had an amazing start. Zai is in a great position to go Bloodstone try and carry this game. But so is Dark Mago, and this Ember is just gonna shred the low armor of this Lashrak for a long time. It's gonna be hard for Zai to just run in and assert his presence in this game. He doesn't have that frost armor like from game one that was powering up the Mickey Lashrak to just run in and yeah. tank all the physical damage. There's a lot to run into. Tombstone, Black Hole, Pudge with his ult, the Ember Slights. This is a game, it's gonna go the distance here. No team is gonna get run over in this early game. More skirmish fighting for 12 minutes. Locks him in. Panda doesn't have his level six, but he does have a tombstone he could drop here. And they do have Matthew to be able oh, to hasted. pull him over to the side here. And it hates Dark Mago. He sees his opportunity. He really wants to pick up all of these kills. Unfortunately, they will not be able to get Mickey as he uses the Rolling Thunder to get out. But still, two support kills and Rolling Thunder on cooldown. That probably means mid is free for the taking. Extra gold for your Pudge. You get some flesh heaps. Yeah, pretty good value out of that haste room. Not able to deny it that time. And he's even going back towards bottom. I think this tower will die. Side does eventually get some points up in this edict. He's gonna get caught though like on glyph. his way out. He can't commit to it with a glyph. And he probably knows the rotation's coming over. Dark oh, Mago is gonna, gonna show up, but there's gonna be a snowball turnaround here. They get the chain stun on out and see if they can kill the Undying fast enough. No other spells are gonna go out. Dark Mago now has to retreat. Fortunately for him, Zai is out of mana. It's not like they have the stuns either way to stop Ember Spirit. That tier one does go down, so Zai gets what he wants, gets to go back to base. Still extremely farm in this game. It's going to be a very fast Bloodstone. Not a lot of early DKPs for Thunder outside of this Ember one. So he's going to be healing. You can infest him too, power him up even more. Yep. Downside between this Life Stealer and Ursa pick, which they were probably deciding, is unlike last game, one or two kills instantly led into that Roshan from yeah. Matumba. Mm -hmm. The Life Stealer, a bit slower in that regard. He's got to farm up into this armlet, into the Deso, whatever he wants to go. Matumba goes a shard a lot of times too. Yeah. He, so you get the extra open wounds, which is going to be decent this game against the Pudge. Allows him to play a lot more active, right? Yep. Maybe that's also part of the reason of putting this Pango mid. Pango mid can scale a lot harder and a lot more reliably than that offlane Pango is playing more of a utility role. True. So already, Diffusal up for Mickey. Over Corrosion, he's pretty good to go. Nice window here for Liquid to try and hit this mid fight. Bloodstone online. And it 
but his rune box, he wants to stop it, he picks it up. But they have the sentry to be able to spot him out, but the Rolling Thunder is coming in through. Good tombs, they do manage to land off of the Sleight of Fist. He has to jump away to the Remnant, but he can come back in from the side here with the, the zombies chasing after Zai. Sacred, he did not feel it. He thought about going up there, I think, and throwing down the black hole, but ultimately calls it off. Oh, wow, there's so much poke being played around by both lineups. The slight change that can put you in a position where you're stuck under Tombstone, maybe a hook comes out. On the dire side, you have these Pango Swashbuckles just burning everybody's mana on top of Crystal Maiden nukes. Really a game of cat and mouse in these river fights. You overstep a little bit. You're gonna get roped into a situation you don't want to be in very fast. Because now up to second in the net where Chart is closing in on that all-important Aghanim Scepter. It's the beginning of the uh, Pudge carry that takes over the game. Will he be able to be strong enough, though, to deal with the life steal? I mean, another ballsy idea of going for this Pudge in the first place. Liquid was in this exact situation against Entity. They had to play up against a, a carry Pudge. They went for the life steal. The life stealer proved to be a super good counter to the Pudge. It's in familiar territory. Yeah, absolutely. And if you remember that game, the, at a certain point, this Pudge just runs out of the physical damage to deal with him. The upside is you have Ember and Enigma to help deal with this life stealer in the later portion. So I don't think you can just always rely on Matumba to be able to man up and cut through those flesh heap stacks. True 5v5 game. Matthew should be able to jump away with the help of Mago's positioning. They try and get the charge nice on out here. They get the vision. Really good chains on the two supports. Mago, is he going to be mid for this one? He's going to be frostbitten, though. Pretty Into low, the snowball. This is kind of awkward with Matumba then right on top of him. He gets another slide out. But does he have a remnant to jump to? Slow. He does, but it's right next to him. Oh, what a play for Matthew. Picks him up, takes him away from that split earth that surely would have been his death. Beautiful dispose, bailing his core out there. That was a strong commit from Dark Mago. He's still one point in his chains. And that makes the skirmishes easier for Liquid. I mean, imagine these chains are level three, level four. Suddenly those types of catches just become brutal. Yeah. So Liquid trying to up the tempo, push this mid tower, double damage on Nikkei as well. Ooh. Now you really have to watch out for these swashbuckles. They're gonna get two shot on some of these backliners. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Let Edict do the work. Really trying to push this one. Thunder. There's no way they're just going to give this one away for free, right? But because like he still Dyer's needs to heal. Top tower is under attack. Another round of Edict is coming in soon. They, they really, I think, would love to be able to play with this Pudge as soon as he's healed up. But tower is going to fall. Thunder. Liquid slightly too fast. Yeah. Link for Enigma was also, is also flying out right now. Maybe if he has that, maybe if they have a Glyph, they can take that fight but nothing aligning at that exact moment for Thunder. It's actually powerful. Like the difference of like yeah. even just 20 seconds. It could be the Thunder is able to take a fight around their tier one. It could be very different with that Blink Dagger. Yeah, I think tags. they're going to look for it now, right? You have Max Tombstone, two smokes on Panda Move, Blink on Sacred. This is a huge window for Thunder to try and hit. And if they, they win, eye. Mago, he can get his BKB as well. The hook is going to miss. The Shards catching two as well. There's going to be the roll in. Mago, he's though. being controlled up. Here comes the Rolling Thunder. It's going to be able to hit Sacred. Oh, they're trying to round bounce back. No, Chase done it. Oh, no. Thunder getting run over now by Liquid. As all of the heroes will surround this Pudge. Can they help what out? What a rebound. The boards. What a rebound. Sun 2 man's done. But Top of Band getting low. The Pekaz Pudge still is long enough to be able to get it three. But the supports will be cleaned up in the end. Boxy even showing up off of a buyback to ensure that the fight is indeed done and dusted. Liquid will take it. But what a turnaround there. It could have been so much worse for Thunder. I mean, Mickey destroyed that fight with the Rolling Thunder. No black hole in sight. They also anchored the fight away from that cliff where high ground tombstone got dropped. Yep. Imagine they're all on top of that during that entire sequence. Just a little too far for Thunder, and of course the hook missing on Zai gives him a free fight. He's in the middle of everybody doing the most damage by far. I'm gonna carry this damn game. Step yeah. aside, boys. Man, this looked like it was just... This Ass looked like a, a wipe in free. This jump in from Matthew, beautiful. Two-man stun, three-man stun, actually, that finishes off two supports and then they get to clean up on the tumba man as well barely that was a rebound from hell right there and yeah. that salvaged a lot of that early game you get wiped there it's a very different story that's why mickey happy with what they got but he rather survived through it and of course so much gold out of that fight for cause in a situation that otherwise was losing yeah the same thing for zai he is he's having quite a game on this little track man
He's gonna have a fast BKB. In fact, he's pretty much gonna have it after this camp. Yeah, this is crazy. Which means what damage is being dealt to him during the BKB duration? Yeah, they really, uh, when you pick up that punch carry, magic damage the carry. downside. You have to be able to survive through his damage. Mm -hmm. Not happening at the exact moment. Later on, that's a possibility, but for now, he is a god among mortals, unless he gets caught in black hole. Yeah, even then, like, the, just the, these channeling spells dismember black hole. If he gets off BKB Bloodstone, I, I just don't think they cut through it, no matter what. I think he just probably heals up too much. Radiance top tower is so they got to be careful about this Leshrag. They need to be able to find anchor fights, as you said, around this tombstone. Big repositioning tool of the hook is going to be all important to make that happen. Good hook could just win or lose the fight. Oh, the roll up. Quick reaction from Mickey. That was very, very nice. smooth and should nice hook. should have gotten the kill on Matthew, but Hook is going to be able to bail him out for in now. The but they are going to be running into this tombstone to take the team fight. Zai is in deep and he used most of his BKB to do damage to nothing. He's out of He's going to run out now. They're going to turn. They're going to go for the uh, dismember here, but the punch is low. They've gotten the black hole to dismember on the life stealer. Oh, They're going to work. Both the cores at both times. Zai's going to fall up here. Oh. Mickey is going to have to carry through the hook, but he's off a tub of it. He needs a little bit more damage zombies. because lives through it all. Triple kill for him. It's liquid to fall this time. That overextension in the tombstone, you have to be careful. This punch can take a lot. Zai just not enough juice in the tank <laughs> runs out of mana i mean he's dealing the damage but he can only do so much but tumba just didn't get to do anything in that fight really he runs and gets dismembered there's a black hole right behind him i mean thunder played that so beautifully oh yeah the hook to save the marcy as well right if that whole yeah. sequence doesn't happen i mean because he rots and kills the creep wave so he can hook his guy out which forces mm. the fight deeper in into Midnight Pulse, into Tombstone. Never refuse gold. The worst anchor you can ask for if you're liquid here. And look at him, just kind of keeping him around this Tombstone in this play right here. I love this. The black hole on Zai, at the same time the dismember on Pulling Matamba in, Man. Yeah. Controlling both the cores like that, stopping all the damage and keeping Pakaz alive to do the raw damage needed. And Mickey is yeah. close to cleaning him up here, too. Yeah. Yeah. If there's one player who has managed his HP better than almost anyone else's tournament, it's got to be because oh, the Bloodseeker yeah. heals to the his <laughs> Pudge game. Oh, and because! Ooh, what a read by him. That is a smoke failure for Team Liquid. This guy is in the zone right now. Radiant's top tower is falling. Might take this entire Liquid squad to bring this guy down. You see what uh, the cause has in his backpack? He's got that nether shawl, which is usually a crazy good item for Pudge. But at the same time, he doesn't necessarily want to be lowering his armor too much against that life stealer. I think he's going to swap it in for the fight. He's using the whip to get around a little bit, get some regen. He'll swap it in. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he's got BKB flying out. So now that Lushrak damage is not going through to as many heroes as they want, right? BKB on Ember, BKB on Pudge. They're going to come out. They're going to fight. They're going to get a really good rolling thunder. Bouncing through the entire team, but because standing strong with the BKB is going to be able to melt through him a tub of it. No, he managed to get the infest off. He's actually inside through, and with the Enigma now dead, so much of their team fight is gone. Because being run down now, the pop out from a tub of it, saved by a sliver of health, stays alive. Oh, he That's gets played it down. Hey, Dark Mago picks up two at the end, but it was still an abject disaster team fight for Thunder otherwise. And back into the Roshan pit they go without Life Stealer. Can they do it? Maybe. Probably can. Pango is probably enough here. And no tombstone, no black hole for that fight. Mickey just controlling them on that clip, on that choke point, absolutely beautifully. Sets up the whole engagement. Once again, Thunder salvaging something at the very end with some nice play to claim at least some kills, but that's Aegis to Zai, which is huge because as we said, he runs in, he runs out of mana. Maybe you don't want to kill him. He comes back a second time with full resources. Your BKBs are gone. We see there, once your BKBs are out, that Lush is going to melt you. The Liquid claiming decent control over this game. They're going to continue to scale through all their cores. Pango working towards that Basher. Matumba taking a backseat to his other two cores in this one, but there's a carry player in the world who's happy to do that to get the win. It's probably this man. Can we take a peek into the late game? What does that look like? in a matchup like this? Because you said you, you just don't think this is going to go the distance, right? So what does that distance look like exactly for both sides? I mean, 
But do you feel like one team or the other has a stronger late game? We're gonna take a peek into this roach fight. I have five marks. Yeah, I found the mark. I got, I got, I got a big roll. I got a big roll in the back line. Come on, in. Yeah, you're here. Let me get the roll. Stay next to me. Stay next to me. Yeah. Gonna come out soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Push, 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 the chaos of a league of a team fight at yeah. uh, in a game three. Call your targets and hope for the best. Yeah, Nick A, you know, look look at the back line. Look at yeah, the back he line. Knew. He hit he that entrance. He said everybody just follow up. Liquid did a pretty decent job. But Tubman man, it's not, it was actually the hook yeah. that hit him and the idol yeah. that yeah. finished him up. That had to feel real bad. The slight missed a little. But yeah. the right clicks always accurate. Now Liquid trying to push a tier two. Get that outpost control. Talking about that late game. This is a scary late game, man. I feel like if this does go late, it's pretty hard to know who wins. The black hole becomes very strong, especially if you land it on Pango. He's kind of the only black hole break. Already Basher online. But of course, a lot of these late games I've seen with Pango here, this hero is just an absolute beast. So hard to shut down. There is no direct counter in terms of rupture or something like that. Yeah. Pudge does not do amazing and super long engagements where he's getting Radiant abused in the physical armor department. You kind of have to get to this five or six slot territory where you have Shivas and you can last through a bunch of damage. It might get to that point. But I think Liquid is comfortable scaling here for the foreseeable future, especially with Roshan control. Nice force. The other side, but and uh, you can only do so much here, my friend. And. Uh, It'll be run down 19 to 21. Pretty even game net worth wise, but Liquid does feel like they have a bit more control of the game, especially with that Aegis and for Zai. Big right. offlaner of Team Liquid is perhaps, <laughs> well, he is the biggest hero in the game with the highest net worth. Yeah, he's the carry now. Yeah. One wild card we have to keep track of is, I mean, Marcy is Marcy, right? Sure. And uh, Matthew's in a pretty decent job finding net worth on this map, almost a BKB. This hero okay. does become a decent X Factor when you get to that BKB, you get to BKB Basher, start solo killing cores out of nowhere. Can give you some extra right click carry potential, which their lineup desperately needs. This is, this, this is going to go late. You can sidekick the Ember, but no one's really manning up into the lifesteal through Rage outside of Black Hole. Right. This is also BKB coming out for Enigma, so this is another big window for Thunder. In theory, an uncancelable unca Black Hole. As long as you don't get bashed. Yeah, that is going to be the big question. Do you think he puts extra effort to grabbing the Pango in the black hole? But at the same time, like, you have to stop his life stealer from eating your Pudge. It's going to be hard for Sacred. He's going to have a hard time choosing what his targets are going to be with his black hole. A dream, of course, would be getting both of them. Oh, if you can just grab all five, that sounds yeah. pretty good. Easy. Flip side is if Liquid can ever see Enigma and jump him. It's the dream. Go for the infest, they go for the initiation. They're gonna try and change that up. Dark Bago, but he gets off the slate and he jumps away. Oh, and the snowball's gonna pull Boxy into an awkward. Oh, it's not just him, it's Zai as well. High ground up right next to the tier two. The tombstone's out and Liquid, they have to retreat. There, that was a very Stop dangerous position to be in. Fortunately, there was no like pudge hook or anything to drag him in even deeper. Yeah, because has Blink, he can reposition, hook some of these heroes very deep. Again, Thunder has spells, they want to anchor the fight around. You pull him in, you have to fight into that Tombstone. It gets a bit scary. Still ages up for 15 there, so Zai might have been okay, but now it's wearing out. He has a Blink of his own, just going full scale build. Full carry, Blink, Hex, Bloodstone, Lashrak, we've seen this a bunch of times. And he's like, Mickey, you looked pretty fun when you were doing it. I think he's asking him what his item build was. <laughs> Could be. Need a little advice. Maybe they're asking each other. That's teamwork, baby. That is. Five man smoke up. A haste rune for Mago. Now. Nice little rune. We've talked about how they got this fresh BKB black hole opportunity. This could be where Thunder turns around some of the uh, the momentum in this game. But it looks like they just didn't really find anything. Liquid playing the opposite Radiant's side of the map, and it's becoming more and more obvious about this play with the tier three being hit by creeps. So. Uh, you they're not losing too much out on the map. That's the upside for Thunder here. It does feel like they're on the back foot. They're getting Radiant's to their BKBs, the ones up on Matthew. Attack. They have this plate mail up on their Pudge now. A lot of EHP going his way. 
And like you said, Haystrun, BKB on Dark Mago. Radiance uh, they feel what I attack. feel. It's time to try and make Dyer's another play. Find top something top on this map. Attack. This smoke fails, you can't help but feel like you're just going to the next Roshan. Yeah, they just double smoked, right? I know. This is a must-have. Boxy just breaks it. Boxy just breaks changed. it. And... Has a snowball. Has a snowball over to the side. We'll try and blink away afterwards. There's going to be the Rob, though, instantly canceling it. But at the same time, the rest of the team? Well, they're kind of here, but they're kind of not. Oh, oh, what a snag from Bakaz. Come to the big man. Uh, Two supports oh. down on the side of Liquid. Uh, but I call it at that. Thunder, we'll see what they can do with this, if they can take some sort of map control. I mean, we also got to start setting up for Roshan soon, too. Yeah, that's what these smokes are for, right? You get the kills, it means you can transition into map control somewhere else. You're just gearing up for this Roshan. You really want it if you're both sides. They just decide your fate at this tournament. It's going to be hard to fight around the pit in a way for both teams, right? You have to keep it... You have to keep in mind this Pangolier. You get stuck on the pit versus the Bashes versus the Rolling Thunder. You're in big trouble. On the flip side, you have Tombstone and Black Hole. You don't want to commit in Clump versus lineup ever in this game. Yeah. It's a deadly area for both teams. That's why positioning vision means everything right now and every bit of survivability you can get. The one upside is Dire always has that Dire outpost with buybacks. And buybacks versus Enigma, powerful as well. Something Liquid might think about in this game. Oh, they see Zai. And he just... They're gonna go for him. See if they can get the hook off of the change or they're just playing for it. Dismember. Now, he did get off the BKB. It'll shrug off a lot of the damage, but the Bloodstone is still on cooldown. He needs some help. He needs a bailout. Boxy is there to pick him into the snowball. Oh, They've also got Matumba Man to perhaps be able to get the infest, but it's just rebound. scoping up, and that is gonna be... One down, but they managed to get the blink away. Dark Bog was just down, and they managed to get a beautiful black hole under the two. It's exactly what they wanted. The Pango and the Life Stealer. Mickey rolls it up. A oh, shield crash on the side. They have to try and Dark run away. Zai's gonna so fight much back damage. In, but look at the damage coming out for this slight and almost cuts down Zai, but he's eating through with the Bloodstone. He's Zai's just up. He's almost back to full. He's unstoppable in this team fight. He's, he's running through here after he hits the split earth as well. You're going nowhere, Mago. He falls as well. Zai here to carry this game they built this lineup around him and he's gonna try and cement their way into the finals into the stadium for liquid Zai putting on every single trick in the book man he gets the blink out of the snowball resets to the back line forces dark mago to chase him super deep and then ends up dealing the most damage hitting the beautiful split north at the end 8400 damage coming out from this slush rack no one was even close it's a one-man wrecking crew it feels like I mean, remember how this fight started. It was him getting caught. Yep. Liquid has to try and bail him out. It's only right that in the end he comes back. It's true. He put them in this nasty position. Yep. He's the one who carries the fight in the end. Big shout out to Boxy there for being able to get that save. But I mean, I thought it was over right here. Sacred yeah. hitting. We said, goes down. we said the best, the ideal scenario is stopping the Basher hero and catching the Life Stealer. Sacred both. did what he needed to do. And and it was an still amazing wasn't ult from him. And this damage coming out was insane. But look at how much this Lestrac heals. There's no BKBs at this point. Yeah. He is mopping them up. So much damage from that Ember Spirit. He had that fresh pickup of the level 20 talent, which is a huge increase in the slight and why he was doing so much. Oh, yeah, the Paladin Sword with the Bloodstone. That's yeah, extra spell that might have made the extra difference. Now, aggressive smoke on their own. Blink Hex on the Slash. He is going to blink on anybody. Blink side straight into Mago. That's what they wanted. The Ember Spirit is down first, and they're going to be able to get the Marcy on top of that. Look at Mickey rolling through the back line. He caught the Marcy. He'll get Panda Moo too. Three dead, and Liquid very well set up for Roshan. It hasn't actually spawned yet, though. So fortunately for Thunder, they will have an opportunity to contest. They have the opportunity. They're not going to have the vision. Now they're going to have to trek back out there, and because maybe in trouble. Oh, this is a little awkward. Nice but he does to get the blink away before the rest of the team. And he's going to go for the hook back in. They're trying to drag Trickle Liquid into by. this nasty situation with all these buybacks. They're going to give up Foxy. Can the rest of Liquid get out? Matumba Man got caught. He doesn't Zai's have the defense. He couldn't jump into anybody, but Zai's going for it. He just jumps right into the entire enemy team with his BKB Bloodstone, but now it's run out. Now he's been dismembered. Now he's stuck the on trouble, top of the Undying. The, the undead duo of Panda Bupakaz will finally bring him down. So again, anchoring that fight deep. It's just a death sentence for Liquid. Of course, that was triple buyback from Thunder, but if they get Roche off it, you have to feel like that's worth it because they oh, were yeah. in no position to get test that. Maybe the bait of Pakaz's life there, just dismembering blinks out before the damage is done. I mean, the amount of small plays in this game is absolutely ridiculous. 
suddenly that Roshan that felt like it was going to be Liquids for sure goes the other way. This is just disgusting, this bait. This play, the hook back in. Matunga Man has blown his rage. The buybacks come into play. They say, this is our chance. This is our opportunity. We don't have vision around Roche, but we can play around our tier two. I mean, it's just a crazy play call, right? You don't even have black hole in this fight. Yeah. Like, Liquid can just back off there, and you're wasting an Ember buyback. They don't get anything out of this engagement. But the bait works. Sometimes they bite, and triple buyback is expensive, but... Uh, Roshan happy to collect the fee. The risk taken to seek the rewards, and they got a big one in that Aegis pickup, plus the shard. So, Thunder, even in a game three, no playing conservatively. They're playing to win right now. They are willing to take those risks in order to get to that top four position. Mickey now with an Abyssal Blade. Big pickup, but the Shivas on because is another huge one. Yeah. That'll help a lot against the damage of that Life Stealer, who has had a precipitous fall in the network chart. Look at him. He's bottom of all the course. I mean, it's a product of the two other carries in this game taking all the net worth away from him. Yeah. They definitely rewarded the team with the amount of damage they've outputted, but of course, Matoma has had to take a step back, and in some ways, he is the big pudge killer. So if he's down there, the cause is up at the top. You have to think about who's going to answer this pudge with Shiva's and Blastrig on him. Thunder on the hunt. Got a lot of armor. To the Crystal Maiden first. Vision down. See everything. Catch him. Matumba Man. Oh, they pass off the gem. But don't let him get away. They caught him. Got Pull him back in. Matumba Man. They do manage to get Whoa. the pass. But there's the black hole. Take with the ball. Blinked into it. Extra one. Mickey jumps into it. Three dead. Roll up. Actually, Mickey. Trying to get away. The last light is coming in. Is it going to be enough? Another hook. Josh to the side. Bumps into the wall, though. He can't blink away. It's going to run out soon. He does not. Shield yes, crash. Blink one. out. But no, it's stopped by Dark Mago. Mickey falls. Four dead on the side of Team Liquid. What a jump in. They were so desperate to save that gem that in the end, they get caught in another bad team fight. No BKP got off for Lesh there. Matumba gets caught. Mickey tries to blink in an Abyssal to salvage that fight with canceling the black hole, but the range is not there, and the aggressiveness from Thunder paying dividends in this late game. Because has absolutely no fear, just goes in, hooks Matumba back, says, you're mine, son. Look at that, Sacred, just a beautiful yeah. follow-up. Asics man to deliver on Enigma, and he does it every single time. Just two or three man holes the entire game. You cannot ask for anything better. Has the vision, has the tombstone to help him out. And of course, his two other frontliners making it easy for him. Liquid caught off guard, and they're going to pay a heavy price here. Oh, yeah. That's going to be tier three. That's going to be perhaps a full lane of barracks. What does a barracks mean, though, Cap? What does a barracks mean in this series? Absolutely nothing in my book. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We had a lot of them we... down game one, and that didn't do shit, so we're still here. <laughs> that is true. It's going to be Team Liquid's. Uh, it's going to be their turn to be playing off the back foot and see how they're able to fare against this pressure. Still two minutes left on the Aegis with the mid lane down. A lot of items coming out for Thunder after that fight. The Octarine was completed on Enigma, so his black hole's lower cooldown. And of course, Marcy working towards that Basher. That's where the fight just becomes even harder for Matumba. Yeah. Like now, you, now you have the One Punch Wonder coming in and destroying your BKB duration. So annoying. On top of that, Pekaz continuing to scale. He's pushing towards the Lincolns. Just buying out here. No fear, no requirement for buyback. The tool to of course, teach. Dark Mago got a shard out of that. Arcane Rune just popped. Level 23. Regen Rune, but die finds the initiation. Marcy, that's going to be the first one down, but it's just a support. Thunder, they can either retreat and call it quits here. No shard latch. Yeah. Nice find by Liquid, trying to deny them that rune control. Give them a window to continue farming here. And I was thinking about it, but Mickey is going to go for that Aether Lens. So his big play, blink in Abyssal the Enigma with the extra range. Yeah, Could but he's insane. He's already, he's already countering that. He's trying to build up the Lincolns. And he's trying to, but he's not there yet, right? That's true, yeah. The cause is closer. Maybe he throws it on his buddy here. Oh, that is going to be super interesting dynamic. Of course, it'll also mean he could build into a full-out Octarine on the Pango at some point, but just this small little window 
could be so key. I mean, I mean the infest jump from Liquid is how they want to fight. Right? Yeah, you infest the less she jumps, you hex somebody, you go on it. The problem is some of these saves are starting to come out. Like, you can rebound dispose, you can blink black hole to cover them, but more importantly, because he has blink Lincolns and the shard on Pudge. He can blink eat somebody. Suddenly your initiation goes away and he's just BKB there eating you instead, right? Yeah. So yeah, game favorability. I, I'd say it does favor Thunder pretty heavily at this point. They have a lot of tools to deal with the liquid initiation and they are ramping up in the scale department. A on disc on Dark Mago as well. These jumps are just becoming harder and harder. And who's actually going to win these late game man fights? Again, like you were saying, Matumba's just on catch up duty this whole game. I don't think he has the firepower to stand there and man fight Marcy and Pudge and Black Hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of problems for him when it was supposed to be a game for Life Stealer to carry. Instead, it turns into a game for Leshrac to carry. That's TB bottom. They're playing around right now. They're looking for another Good opportunity, job. another initiation. Got another opportunity. Got the opportunity. Got the got the BKB. BKB. Turn around, Black Hole. It's a disaster. Oh, no, Liquid, what have you done? Instantly, the two carries of the game gone. Chains. Dark Mago with the plus one. Real and Becky with the hook, baby. Three dead on Liquid. Thunder, thunder, thunder. They're beginning to feel it now. They're beginning to feel a series cooking up to their advantage. 8,000 net worth lead. They can run down this side lane. They can force some buybacks even. 11 years in the making for this game right here for South American Dota. And that tree line did them all the favors, man. I think Zai lost vision around the fog just for that second, which is long enough for Saker to get his BKB off. Yep. Imagine that ward still on the high ground. Oh, he just didn't so get close. him in time. And Picasso's was right there throwing the Lincoln, so yep. he's aware of this play. A game of inches. That is Dota 2. And it's another botched initiation that's just going to cost Liquid dearly here. Another lane of racks. They have the tier 2 top, so... No chance for Megas up in 20. But Thunder are in full control of this game. And it doesn't look like it's getting much easier. Again, the net worth is just not there on your life stealer. It's coming down to these clutch jumps from Zai, but he's running out of gas. And the levels are just pouring in for Thunder after all these engagements. Level 25 on this Ember Spirit. He's debating what he wants to go here. But if Ags is on the horizon, both these talents seem pretty juicy. Avery, I can't help but thinking back to that secret Mineski series. Another series where there was a Mega Creeps comeback. And Mineski, they lost that game one. But they go on to win game two. And it's one of those great what ifs of Dota 2. It's like, what if they managed to just close out that game one? They 2 0 team secret. What an incredible play. And I have to wonder in a game three like this, if that starts worming into your head. If we had just closed out that game one, we would have moved on already. Team Liquid. There is so much stress in them right now. They're gonna yeah, find another pickoff here. It's going to be Insania died first, but there is a Rolling Thunder on out there. Trying to hit some of the back line. Nobody's there to follow it up, though. I think Mickey is probably just gonna end. Well, he's gonna have to reset here. This is awkward. Yeah, he's going back into them. Starts blinking away to the side. It's because they actually have Zai out here as well. But this Thunder, they're closing in. They are going to be able to catch up here. The BKB goes out for Mickey. Zai, he's going to pop that side. He's trying to stop that dismember. They need the bashes. They need to be able to stop Saker as well. Saker, they spot him. They need a bash. And they hit it. Oh, a desperate bash. He immediately buys back, though. Now it's Liquid. They got to reset this one somehow because otherwise Saker's going to come in with the game ending black hole. They're rolling Thunder on through because Snatch is up in Sania. That's going to be a die back there. But Tumba Man sinking on top of the Pudge. It's as possible. Zai, they're going to try and chase down this Pudge. Saker's not here yet to bail him out. It's Liquid finishing up the Heroes of Thunder. The buybacks are going to be potentially completely wasted here for Thunder. I did not think that was a fight for Liquid, but Thunder just got split on target prioritization. And of course, no black hole for this Enigma. He had a chance to throw it, but the jump from Zai, too good that time. Able to finish him off before it comes out. Double buyback for Thunder, Enigma, and Marcy. Oh, now they're looking for more. Even more. Immediate buybacks. Oh, that is everybody. What a use. The neutral. I mean, push him away. He something. stops the stun. Matthew is. Oh, no. He's not going to be able to get out. Boxy is stuck here. He does what damage he can. Zai's actually trying to follow it up, but they don't want to go for an undying. That's not the hero. Oh, Black oh, hole. They're winning. Oh, no. Sacred. He thought he had Mickey to pistol lane on through. They're going for Zai. 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 He's dead. Finished out. Because found his victim. Sacred's going to finish off by Matumba Man at the same time. Two off laners dead. Mickey. BKB. But a no, bash is going to stop him. You're not getting away from Marcy. A swashbuckle over the side. But Marcy sticks to it. Another hook lands from Because. And that 
Mickey down means Thunder are going to be able to turn their attention over the Roshan. Liquid. All the buybacks, so aggressive from Thunder in this game, making it work. Another Roshan going their way. And Pakaz hitting level 25, hitting more flesh heaps. This guy's got 84 bonus strength in the pocket, pushing 5,000 HP. He is a killer. And he wants that top four berth. Another game which hinges on the edge here. Very little buybacks for both teams. Only the Pangolier, but of course, Roshan down, and that is a refresher shard going Thunder's way. I think they would have preferred oh. the Ags. Do you? I mean, they've got an Enigma, but maybe just uh, one black hole is always going to be good enough. I feel like Ags on this Ember is pretty, mm. pretty disgusting, but of course, refresher shard for Enigma. You're never going to refuse it. And I mean, we see Liquid. They have doing an amazing job making this game hard for Sacred. That last fight, black hole on nothing. That's the pressure. He's getting jumped. He's getting forced around the most you can do in this type of situation and you got five buybacks out of thunder i'm getting flashbacks to game one man where oh boy <laughs> don't you dare say it don't you dare say it avery i mean uh, no buybacks you know <laughs> something goes wrong here it only takes one jump one team type from liquid yes Thunder in control, very confident, but at the same time, how bold are they, right? Do they want to take a fight before Dyer's those buybacks come back up? Yeah. Attack. Dark Mago can farm his here, and that's a big deal because he can just go in in front line, use it, buyback, come instantly in with the remnant. So that's probably the best hero to have the buyback up on. I mean, he's got, he's swapping so many items in his backpack, he doesn't even have the slots. <laughs> And of course, Aeon Discs galore for this Thunder team. Sacred has his, he can assemble it at any time. Refresher Shard pass to him as well. We are hitting late game territory with an Enigma with many ults. And Liquid stuck in a base defense situation. They can find the jump. They can still win this game. So one crucial play we have to outline here, Sacred has an unlocked Aeon Disc. He does. In his backpack. So if they try and focus him down, they jump on top and get the bash. Go, go, go. Kill this Enigma. If he pops in that Aeon disc, it's a huge opportunity to turn around and get the black hole. It doesn't matter if you're doing damage. Just the control is going to be enough. Absolutely. And remember, Pakaz can blink, dismember any of his teammates at yeah. any point. He has Aegis on top of himself as well. Refresher in the backpack. Just so much net worth on this Thunder team. A lot of it is in these weird items, but they actually passed the Refresher Shard back to Marcy over here. I mean, honestly, okay. double ult, double BKB. Yeah. Not too shabby. Maybe they just don't want to put all their eggs in this Enigma basket. That's fair Can't enough. blame them, because you know Liquid is thinking about him. Every fight, find the Enigma, find the Enigma. That is the way to victory. Last lane here. We're going to see another Mega Creep situation. How blessed are we today? It's such a scary <laughs> position for Thunder, who are the ones making the shot here. They're making the call. They do not have the buybacks, but they do have an Aegis. They have this overwhelming advantage for the next team fight. But if they stumble here just before the finish line, it could be all over so quickly. Dark Mago jumps forward. But Tumble Poke bought out. He bought out for AC. He is short buyback. No 400. Oh, there's the hook. The, ball. the first snap. They're trying to deal with this ward. And no it ends buy. up getting a freebie. Now it's a four versus five. Four versus six with the Aegis. Mickey. Rolling Thunder, here it comes. Mickey leading off the charge. Gotta make it count. Zai getting passed. Matthew on in. He got passed on the jump. Immediately the bash going in. And now the Walrus Punch as well. But the BKB, it's running out. Now he's got the black. He got bash but again. Bash again. Oh, that's gonna be a dive back. And Pagaz is in so deep. But Top Man needs it out. His rage was running thin to invest inside of Zai. But now Zai's in trouble. He's being focused down. Zai and Top Man pops right back out. They have the refresher. And they that is gonna be enough to be able to finish off a Top Man. But he doesn't have the buyback. Boxy, he's going in. Zai. Get back to the fountain, the Havoc Hammer, pushing him away. Push Pekaz, melting them off. Running him down, the Bloodstone gets up. Rampage. Getting a kill. Rampage on the mid stage, but because Matumba Man got the buyback, he's going to die once. Nobody else. It's just Dark two Mongo. On two. It's just because a two the on blink. two. Two cores. A blink away. The Rolling Thunder doesn't land. Can they escape? Does Liquid want to pursue? Do they have to? Insania now joining in with them. Dark Mongo's going to try and deal with him where he can. The Freezing Field going out with the Suns. The it's actually doing so much. What the?
the fuck are these games, man? I have no idea. These games are absolutely bonkers. Thunder have no buybacks. Is this a thrown situation for Liquid? Can they do they it? just walk it down mid. Walk down mid lane, A click, the throne. Are Liquid going to be able to do it fast enough? You know what, Tumbo was like 100 gold off buyback in that fight. Yeah, he got it up as Picasso is in the base, melting them all. You cannot ask for oh anything closer. So many of those fights too. Sacred blinked in and got insta bash first hit. Then he got abyssal bashed off the swashbuckle. Radiance the Dota gods did not want that black hole going off. And it might just pay the final price here for Thunder in their upper bracket. Avery, you lower said bracket. a little luck. I don't even know what bracket. Goes a long way. A little luck is a pretty good strategy in this game. Black hole up in nine. It's got to be the one of a lifetime. They still have Glyph. Okay, we have Glyphs. How much does Liquid want to push it? He's going to heal up as much as possible. Black hole ready to go. We have this Marcy who does a ton of damage. We talked about how much farm Matthew was getting. Can he, with Sacred, stop this? Or can they delay stall enough for the rest of the team to show up? And the, the Undying's going to be here. I think this is going to have to be up. Remember, they get another four. cliff here, too. If they don't go soon, though, it's going to be the Leshrac joining them as well, a three on five. This is a hard fight. You have to pick your jump well. You have to hit Gors with the hole. Now. Sacred goes for it. If he leave the black the hole, they're just going to focus all in onto Mickey. And it looks like maybe got they the got him down. Oh, the no. All over the side. Swatch will go over the rolling thunder off through them. Mickey surviving through it. And now the Marcy dies. And now they get the stun on the Sacred. Now it's he's not at 12. Enough. 12 seconds. How much can you get in 12 seconds, Liquid? Can you claim top four in five? It's not going to happen. The throne's not dying fast enough. Dark Vlog was up there oh, too. just killed him. Bunch up in one. Jump back in. Now the buybacks. Now the comeback. Swipe through. for your the life. The throne died fast. 1,000 health. Trying to finish up. The Liquid is get it. Absolutely insane from Liquid. Can you believe it? A tragedy. A triumph. A curse. A miracle. Call it what you want. But it is Team Liquid taking top four. Team Liquid is going to the finals of the International. Going to the final. They still got some ways to go, but they are going to that final weekend. I mean, how many carries does it take to break this Thunder team? You have to give it to them. Because might be the best carry in the world right now, but Team Liquid just playing on another level in these end games. Every single little thing seemed like it was going their way down the clutch. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs>